The St. Louis Cardinals are 54 and 43, a surprising 11 games above the 500 mark here on July 18th of this 2008 campaign. A big reason why, starting pitching. Brayden Looper in his second season in the rotation. Looking for win number 10 tonight. Looper 9 and 7, Maddox 3 and 8, baseball around the corner on FSN. Another hot, steamy night here in downtown St. Louis. Game number two between the San Diego Padres and the St. Louis Cardinals with the win last night. The Cardinals are back to 11 games above the 500 mark. Loving the long ball. That was the case last night for St. Louis against Jake Peavy. He would give up four home runs, all solo shots. Rick Ankeel, number 21, two off the bat of Troy Gloss. And Joe Mather late just over the wall, picked up the home run off the bench. Cardinals beat Jake Peavy and they take game one four to three. That's Al Roboski. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Welcome to the broadcast booth and welcome to game two between the Padres and the Cardinals. It was uh, a little bit of a nerve wracking experience there in the ninth inning Al no doubt about it but the Cardinals get the win and, and you say it's a much needed win. You set the tone for the second half and really you set the tone for the series. Well I think that's right. The Cardinals have been struggling at home so it was good to get that first win last night and do it in dramatic fashion. The four solo home runs you know Ryan Franklin picks up the save but had a little trouble with back to back doubles but then he nailed down the victory. Not many expected the Cardinals at this point in the season to have 54 wins that's a surprise and also a surprise Ryan Ludwig this lineup has been so good at times that Ludwig wasn't even in the lineup last night following the all star game and of course he was an all star and this is a look at your Ford key in the month of July for Ryan Ludwig hitting 310 and making his first ever all star appearance we had a chance to visit with him before the game and ask him about the experience at Yankee Stadium in New York. Well, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, it's the break, obviously, and it's a great honor to be there, especially, you know, knowing that the peers voted me in, and I had a great time, you know, but now it's back to business, you know. Um, game one of a series here, and uh, we got to have a good second half run. 21 home runs on the season for Ryan Ludwig, and he's in that great spot in the lineup right in front of Albert Pujols tonight. Yeah, it's a spot where Tony likes to put a damage hitter, a guy that can do some power, can do a lot of things, and, of course, Ludwig is uh, very capable in that situation. But I'd like to see us not be so dependent on the long ball. Well, they'll have to do it tonight against the future Hall of Famer, one of the game's best. Always fun to watch him. Maddox through the years, Atlanta, Chicago, now San Diego. A look at Greg Maddox is next. Fans are finally in here to Bush Stadium on this hot night here in St. Louis. It'll be Braden Looper against the future Hall of Famer. There he is taking in BP. That's Greg Maddox now of the San Diego Padres. It began back in the mid 80s where he was one of the top young pitchers while with the Chicago Cubs. As we take a look through the years of his career it starts with Chicago and Cubby Blue Al. Well he's just an outstanding young pitcher. He really wanted to become a better pitcher and he was a quick study. As he moved along, the one thing is consistent is his victories. He has been so tough on the Cardinals through the year. 350 major league wins. This guy just knows how to pitch. He's got over 3,000 strikeouts and less than 1,000 walks. What is it about him that makes number 31 one of the best pitchers in all of Major League Baseball ever? Well, the fact that he can dissect the weakness of a hitter and then exploit that weakness with his pinpoint control. He's just a master and an artist on the mound. And he is looking to snap a streak of 12 winless starts. His last win came on May 10th against Colorado. Since that date, he is 0-5, 7 no decisions, an ERA that is just over four. But we saw that the run support last night for Jake Peavy, not as good as it needs to be. And it's been that way this season for the future Hall of Famer, Greg Maddox. It's Braden Looper. It's Maddox. It's the Cardinals. It's the Padres. Game two of this four-game set right here on FSN Midwest. Hello everybody welcome back inside Bush Stadium Cardinals Padres Dan and Al with a call coming up next but in the meantime let's check what else is going on around the league and we start with the Cubs they get their second half underway tonight in Houston Ted Lilly takes them out at Minute Maid Park against Brian Moeller Chicago begins tonight with the best record in baseball and holds a four game lead over the Cardinals in the Central Division the Cubbies though just 20 and 26 on the road this year. 
Later tonight, CC Sabathia makes his third start as the Brewers. Milwaukee kicks off their second half in San Francisco. Sabathia tossed a complete game his last time out and improved it 2-0 as a Brewer. Sabathia will be making just his second career start against the Giants. Next week, he's scheduled to take them out in St. Louis for game three of the huge four-game set between the Cards and the Brewers. So look at the rest of the National League, top of the fourth, and the Reds leading the Mets 1-0. Bottom of the third, Philly over Florida 3-zip. And scoreless between Washington and Atlanta. That game is in the bottom half of the second. After the game of the postgame show, inside the Cards Clubhouse with player reaction and Tony LaRusso's postgame press conference. Plus, Rick and I break it down and Friday, so we hand out the weekly Hungo Award. Cardinal Baseball, Dan and Al, next. The Cardinals and the San Diego Padres meet in the second of their two series meetings here in 2008, their lone matchup at Busch Stadium. The Cardinals win by a run last night in dramatic fashion late in the game. Ryan Franklin would close it out in a 4-3 victory for St. Louis. Can they make it? Two wins in a row. Brayden Looper gets the start. Baseball next on FSN. Baseball tonight on FSN Midwest is brought to you by Bud Light. Endless refreshment from start to finish. Bud Light keeps it coming. By Auto Tire for the lowest prices in town. 26 locations to serve you. You ought to go to Auto Tire, the tire pros. By Steak and Shake. By Geico Direct. And by Southwest Airlines. With Southwest Airlines, you're now free to be more productive. Visit Southwest.com today. And away we go. It is game number two between the Cardinals and the San Diego Padres. Jody Garrett to lead it off. First pitch, base hit, line drive into center field. First pitch at 7-14. One pitch and a base hit off the bat of Jody Garrett. Rico Stutter for the Cardinals. It's Braden Looper. 9-7 is his record. ERA of 4.25. And he is in his second year in the rotation. And really, there have not been a lot of bumps in the road along the way for Braden Looper here in year, uh, year two. His 50th career start tonight, 623rd appearance. He's lost his last two starts and hasn't won in three weeks. Edgar Gonzalez digs in. He homered last night. Real nice win for the Cardinals with four solo shots. And we saw early on there are the numbers for Gonzalez that Kyle Loge probably didn't have his best stuff with a 30 pitch first inning, but he got it through that. And he got it his way to win number 12. Yeah, great to see that. And Kyle Loesch was talking about the struggle, but finally figured it out. And you see, he went seven innings, and everything falls in place when your starter does that. 90 degrees here in St. Louis. Kyle Loesch, 12 and 2. He has lost only twice, basically, in the last year. You have to go back to late July, his last loss prior to this season coming into this season. And a pick off at first. Garrett is back in there. And of course, Pujols with that quick tag. And Loge has only lost twice wearing the birds on the bat. It's a timing play between these two, and they've got it down to a perfect science. They really do. 23 pickoffs Ooh. to lead the major leagues for Yadier Molina, and that was very, very close. I'll say he was out. Well, I don't get a vote. Well, Bruce Druckmann. And overruled you. Up the middle, another base hit into center field. So back to back singles to start this game. And let's take a look at the San Diego lineup as we talked about last night. They have struggled offensively this year. They released Edmonds. They've made changes in the middle of their lineup. We'll highlight Adrian Gonzalez, who's having a great year. 17 games against the Cardinals in his career. Three home runs, and he's hit 351. Garrett, Gonzalez, and Giles. Then it's Gonzalez again. That's Adrian. And then Kuzminov, Headley, Green, Hunley, and Maddox. Always fun to see the future Hall of Famer, Greg Maddox. It sure is. I mean, he's just a class act. We enjoy watching him pitch. And really, when you talk about one of the top pitchers in the history of the game. And he's done all of it. He's only four wins away from Roger Clemens. He's done all this. In the steroid era, for the most part. Well, and and a home run era. Yeah. You know, just where massive amount of scoring, but he's just a machine out there, and and what a true professional, both on and off the field. And you have to wonder about where he will finish up this season, and if indeed this will be his last year. He prefers to stay on the West Coast, but 
You wonder if the Atlanta Braves would be in contention and need pitching. Would he go back to Atlanta? What about the Chicago Cubs? Could they use him? Would he go back there for a third time? Being a pennant race, I'm sure he would. Yeah, I, I agree. He's been doing it since 1986. What's two more months somewhere else? The 2 1 pitch. Line drive into center field. And Keel will back up and he makes the catch. Garrett will tag up from second to third. Runners at the corners with one out. Another hard hit ball. Let's take a look at the Cardinals defense tonight. Around the Horn, as always, is brought to you by Auto Tire. And for the Cardinals, it's Schumacher in left and Keel in center. Ryan Ludwig getting the start tonight in game two. He's in right. Gloss is Turris on the left side of the infield. Ryan and Pujols on the right side. And Yadier Molina is behind the plate. Defeated the Padres back on May 21st. Five innings in that game. When he is right, lots of ground balls. And he needs one right here to try to get a double play. Thinking right with you, partner. He's induced 12 double plays this season. And is tied for 13th most in the National League, and he could use one now. Adrian Gonzalez, again, what a year he has had. One out, runners at the corners. And this guy with 22 home runs and doing it in one of the biggest ballparks in Major League Baseball at Petco Park in San Diego. Plays every day, leads all Major League players in innings played in the field. He's tied for first in the National League with. This being his 97th game played and against Luperi's five for 10 with a pair of home runs. The Padres 14 and 29 on the road that ties him with Colorado for the fewest away wins in the major leagues. 22 games overall under 500 for the first time since the end of the 2003 season when they finished last in the National League West. Rough year for Bud Black. I joked with Bud. I said, you know, I'm not going to ask you about your team because I know you're still trying to know him. A lot of new faces. He said, oh, about 13 of them. And I said, well, how about the ninth inning? Cardinals and Ryan Franklin were facing uh, the Portland Beavers. And that was it. There were three minor leaguers that went up there to hit. Bruce Bochy, a number of years in San Diego, guided them to the World Series back in 1998. They lost to the Yankees. It seemed like they always hooked up with the Cardinals in postseason play. They did in 96. A couple of times recently here in the mid 2000s. But the Cardinals and Tony La Russa, since he has been here, divisional play, they have just dominated the playoffs. The first round has been all Cardinals. Three and one the count. You talked about it last night, and I'm sure we'll get a good look at it here. Adrian Gonzalez stands way off the plate. Now, I was kind of surprised when I saw how far off the plate he was. Kuzman off. You know, the on deck hitter, but he's back in the box. He's basically on the, on the chalk. The line, on the chalk line, but it looks like he's, you know, really almost 10 inches away from the line. And this pitch has popped up. What a big out this would be. Molina has a play. There it is. Out number two and a big out here in the top of the first. And that's a good pitch by Looper. He stands so far off the plate, but you still you go inside. You know, you don't hit the corner. You go you go about six inches inside. And he swings at. So two outs, runners at the corners for Kevin Kuzminoff, who's hitting 277, 12 home runs and 40 driven in. Two outs, runners at first and third for Kuzminoff. Just underway here in St. Louis. Scorching afternoon. Cooled off a bit, 90 degrees or game time temperature. Pretty much the same thing that happened last night as the game moved forward. Cooled off a little bit, really became a nice night. Fastball misses up and away. Kuzminoff swinging a hot bat. 12 hits in his past 30 at bats with five doubles. And the reason that that was such a big out with Gonzalez, he leads Major League Baseball. Everybody, 24 of his 71 ribbies, have put his team ahead at the time of the RBI. And arguably, their most dangerous bat is retired. One ball and one strike. It's back-to-back -back singles by Garrett and Edgar Gonzalez. They stand at first and third. 
Giles lined out to center. Gonzalez popped out. Two balls and one strike. Ball kind of got away from Looper and awkwardly caught by Molina. And a ball up and in to Kuzminov. You always got to watch out. He is one away from tying the franchise record already this year by being hit by pitches in a season. The 2 1. Kuzminov out to deep left field, but that'll stay in the ballpark. Schumacher is back near the track and puts it away. Padre strand two. Cardinals coming up in their half of the first, and there's no score. And we're back. It's the bottom of the first here in St. Louis. Mara is 21. Tonight, be safe. Have some fun here at the ballpark. We'll highlight Troy Gloss this month. Six home runs, 11 RBIs. He told us, Al, we should have believed him. When the weather gets hot, he gets hot. And that has been the case. Well, it's hot, and so is he. As he's been on a toward base, he's six away from 300 in his career. Of course, 300 was eclipsed by Maddox a while back as he has not won in 12 starts. But very little run support 350 career wins for this future Hall of Famer. He is our Rico starter and a foul tip off the bat of Skip Schumacher. Nothing it seems like is over the middle of the plate. Lots of movement late movement in and out up and down. He can be as tough as anybody in baseball. Well, they say actually he's he's making a few mistakes but you know he's been around a long time and he's really not much more than a five inning pitcher now. So he's looking to snap that streak of 12 winless starts. His last win was 350. That was on May the 10th at Colorado. Schumacher takes a strike. May have been a little high. One ball and two strikes. He was one for four last night, and he was robbed by Headley and left of the second base hit in the game. The Cardinals did not have an at bat with runners in scoring position in last night's game. It was four solo home runs. Headley and left to make the catch. And let's take a look at the uh, defense behind Greg Maddox on this hot night in St. Louis. Headley in left. Garrett is in center. Giles in right. Kuzminov and Green on the left side of the infield. Gonzalez, Gonzalez on the right side. Edgar and Adrian. Hundley is behind the plate. And that's 727 career starts. <laughs> this is 58th, uh, 57th start, 58th career appearance against the Cardinals. And here's Ryan Ludwig did not get the start last night for Tony La Russa, fresh off the all star game. Uh, there are a lot of people who are wondering about that but the fact is Jake Peavy really owned right handed batters so he had the three left handed swinging outfielders and then we proceed to get three of the four home runs off bats of right handers. So. What's interesting too is that you know Tony always looks at the numbers and Ludwig has eight home runs six doubles twenty three RBIs in 19 games against the National League West this season. 441 that's what he's hitting against the West 251 against the rest of baseball and that is a foul ball. It's our third base umpire Jerry Davis had a nice conversation with Jerry before the game said he always loves coming through St. Louis he's been doing it a number of years and one of the better ones in baseball he's known your family for decades right he's behind home plate as a young lad one time Al with the old Bush Stadium and Bruce Souter closed out a game and Jerry Davis found me and gave me the game ball afterwards. Oh, you're about two years old. No, no, no. Give me some credit, Al. I'm actually growing up in front of your eyes. Strikeout of Ludwig, and that is uh, the second out here in the first. Oh, you talk about painting the outside corner. There's a good example of it. And over 3,000 strikeouts, less than a thousand walks, and to my knowledge, he'd be the only the second to Fergie Jenkins to accomplish that feat. Albert Pujols with two outs and no runners on. Off speed pitch at 77 miles an hour. Strike one. Ho hum for Albert batting 348, 18 home runs and 50 driven in. Here's the 0 1 pitch. 
I've had some fans recently say, boy, pool holes, it just doesn't seem like it's an Albert-type year. <laughs> no. And then you look up at the numbers, he's hitting 350 after the All-Star break. And, you know, and he spent time on the disabled list. Here's a 1-1. Pujols chops it left side, base hit, past Khalil Green and into left. It's interesting the way that Kuzminov pulled up on that ball, thinking maybe his shortstop might be able to play, but definitely the only one that had a chance for it was the third baseman. So that balance and just to pitch up a little bit, but it's only a single with two outs. See the movement as the catcher's glove goes to the inside part of the plate. But Albert's hands stay back and at the ready. This guy has been ready as of late, Troy Gloss. Line drive, base hit, left center field. Pujols on his way to second base. On his way to third, they will hold him up and Pujols will stop at third. So a double for Troy Gloss. The hottest bat right now in this lineup. Boy, he is swinging a bat. Initially, when you saw this get into the gap in left center, you're thinking Pools maybe tries to score. And you still got to remember, Albert's not 100% with his legs, so, you know, he's going to give you all the effort he has, but he still has to play with a little bit of restraint. Rick Ann Keel. Talking with Mark Grace on our pregame show. He'll be covering the game for Fox tomorrow. It's Fox Saturday Baseball. He said he struck out against Ann Keel, but really just cannot believe this story. Base hit. Center field. One run is in. Gloss on his way home. Two to nothing St. Louis. A two out single by Rick Ann Keel. RBIs 52 and 53. Home runs are great, but you like to see the three consecutive base hits and not be dependent on home run balls all the time. Another pitch that's up a little bit, just a nice controlled swing by Rick, just guiding the ball out to the center of the diamond. And that's what they talked about. You know, in his 23rd year in the big leagues, Maddox is getting some of his pitches up and not quite as effective in the past. Yadier Molina on the first pitch pops it up. Gonzalez, the first baseman, calls for it in fair territory and has it. The Cardinals strand a runner. That's Ricky Ann Keel, but Ann Keel picks up two RBIs. When he drives in a run, the Cardinals are 23 and 9 this year. This state in baseball history brought to you by Schnooks. Enos Slaughter collects his 2,000th career hit, a 14 6 loss to the Dodgers. July 18, 1953. Enos Slaughter with our This State in Baseball history. Cardinals have grabbed a 2 0 lead in just a moment. We'll visit with Lou Brock, the Hall of Famer. He's got a nice event coming up to benefit children here in St. Louis. We'll do that in the third inning. But we're lucky enough that he joins us in between innings to chit chat. Wow. And knowing Lou, of course, I've turned around and talked to him about a charity event that I've got. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as the night goes along. But and of course he goes, hey Al, you got to come with me to this meeting for the backstop. And that's another great organization that we all should support in our in our community. And for Lou, it'll be the Echo Foundation Fund. And we're going to play in his tournament. Yes, we are. The 2-1 is tapped foul, 2-2. Two and two. Looking forward to that. It's an off day, too, for the Cardinals. So hopefully some of the players in management, Tony La Russa, will hopefully be there as well. Uh, Looper gave up a couple hits but uh, knuckled down and did not allow them to score and his teammates rewarded him with a pair in the first. Tied him up on this pitch. And the catch made by his tourists who flips to Schumacher and they'll go around the horn. <laughs> a couple of pitches by Maddox as you noted during the breakout were up and the Cardinals took advantage. Yeah, I, I talked to Hal McRae and I said have you seen anything different with Maddox and he's and he emphasized the fact a lot of pitches are up and that's what they're looking for. You know you don't get many chances against Maddox and take advantage of it. one out and that pitch is up for a strike. If you know somehow some way he will be competitive through this contest.
Out to deep right field. Ludwig is back at the wall, and it's just over the wall. It's a home run. Khalil Green, opposite field, number nine of the season. It's a little more indicative of the electric bat that Khalil Green has and not his 214 average. This guy can be a very exciting player, but his average is way down. Cuts the lead at two to one. Here's the pitch from Looper, the home run pitch. And this pitch is up. And Ludwig trying to give an all star effort, but it just snuck over the wall. Home run number nine, RBI number 33, and it cuts the lead to two to one. And it's their catcher, Nick Hundley. It'll be Fox Saturday baseball tomorrow. And that is a foul ball. Then on Sunday, it'll be with Ricky Horton and Jay Randolph. They'll be on Channel 5 and the Cardinals Television Network in a big series coming up. Milwaukee in town beginning Monday night, the first of four. Good seats are still available. That home run brings an over 23 streak by Khalil Green. Not related to Randy Hundley, if you're curious. Pitch in the dirt, one ball and two strikes. Might hit like Randy, he's batting 200. Oh, Al, Al, Al. You have come out tonight with guns a blazing. One two pitch. Doesn't quite have the power of Todd Hundley. Yeah. Well, that's a pitch that in years past has been a strike undoubtedly for Glavin and Maddox as they made a living on that outside corner. That is just outside three and two. And a lot of people believe that Atlanta didn't have that great run of World Series championships because the strike zone once postseason play started it uh, it changed for those guys. And there is some validity to that you know as managers would make such a a point to bring them back into the strike zone you know a lot more critical analysis as as the scrutiny and and they didn't get away with but I mean I'll tell you what those guys were such great pitchers they lulled the umpires into you know taking drifting out there and, and getting a wider strike zone sometimes to a to a joking matter but you know those guys earned that right three and two. City of St. Louis is on the clock for the All Star game next year. They say the economic impact will roughly be around $60 million. The 3 2 pitch. Oh, yeah, he got him. Strikeout of Nick Hundley. First strikeout tonight for Braden Looper. Not sure what he's waiting for, or looking for here on this pitch. Right there down the middle. Bit out toward the outside portion of the plate, but as you said, should be looking for a fastball. Maddox not hitting as well as he has in the past. And a fly ball hit to right. Ludwig under it makes the catch. It's Turris, Looper, Ryan. Seven, eight, and nine coming up. Khalil Green with a home run cuts the lead at two to one. Al, you wouldn't believe it, but Sunday night is television's biggest night. Summer sports block, beginning with the Hooters Dream Girls, then baseball's Golden Age, followed by amazing sports stories, and finally the best damn top 50. The summer sports block begins Sunday at 7, only here on FSN Midwest. <laughs> Cesar Isturis is the first hitter for the Cardinals against Greg Maddox here in the bottom of the second. The Cardinals owning a 2 1 lead thanks to Rick Ankeel, his RBI single in the first with two outs to score two. Sturris has had some mild success against Maddox. Switch hitter, May 277 right handed, just 206 left handed, and 233 overall. Tell you what, Lou still got great hands. He's still got the hands from our position here in the booth. Al, I threw it about uh, 
I'd say two feet wide. He was in the middle of having a sip of water reaching across his body, making a backhanded stab, and he picked up. He picked up. Look at this. Blue, do it again. Even with a bag in his hand, he doesn't stop. Yeah, What's up with this man guy? Has Let's get him back three, in uniform. Over 3,000 hits, 938 stolen bases, and you're questioning his hands? <laughs> I never would question Lou Brock's hands, but I never envisioned myself throwing throwing plain bags of catch. peanuts at the great Lou Brock. But I've done it. Uh, that's of course that's, you've been known to throw, you've been known to throw peanuts at a lot of people. I'm just making fans with Cardinal Nation up you here. You are. That's what it's all about, Al. Having fun at the old ballpark. People only knew about your speech to the masses before the game, our winning tradition. It's really caught on in this particular <laughs> part of the ballpark. It, it definitely has in our booth. <laughs> it's a Friday night. The weekend is here. Lou Brock is going to be with us. And Maddox a check on his tourists over at first. Who's Manoff playing in at third base looking for the bunt. And the bunt is back to Maddox, the Gold Glove winner, who tags out Looper. Does he have 16, 17 Gold Gloves? He's 16. That's another way you can win. Gets himself in great fielding position, and rarely does he make a mistake defensively. Join us Sunday, August 3rd, for the Build a Bear Workshop Day here at Bush Stadium. Number to call for tickets: 345-9500, or visit us online at stocardinals.com. That game is now at 7 p.m. Also want to remind folks that have tickets for Monday night's game against Milwaukee to accommodate national television. Game has been bumped up an hour. Runner goes throw to third and the ball scoots away. So a stolen base for his tourists. Aggressive play number nine for his tourists to lead the team. And he just had a good jump. Nice throw here, but Kuzminov could not hold on to it. No further advancement. Got that right-handed batter, and if he holds on to it, he might have slid right into the tag, but no, it looked like he was going to be safe either way. Brandon Ryan, little chopper towards short. Green over to his left, makes the play, and the Cardinals have their 2-1 lead back. Man, that's what I'm talking about. Do not be so dependent on the the home run ball. You have to manufacture some runs in his tourist with a walk, the sacrifice, the stolen base third, and then an infield RBI off the bat of Brendan Ryan. His eighth RBI gives credit to Tony Larusa. Fans really applaud that style of baseball. Hear the loud cheer for the ground ball, the small ball that the Cardinals just played, the sacrifice, the steal. An infield out and a run scored. 3-1 St. Louis. The 0-1 pitch to Schumacher make it 0-2. He flied out to left to start the, the Cardinals offensively back in the first. RBI for Brendan Ryan, his eighth of the year. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Maddox has allowed 16 of 18 runners to steal against him this year. Brendan Ryan is first RBI in July. The swing and a miss. Schumacher strikes out and coming up. A visit with the Hall of Famer, the great Lou Brock. 3-1 St. Louis. Tonight's ball game on FSN Midwest is presented in FSN HD. That is high definition. I've always said I wanted to have one of my dreams come true play catch with a Hall of Famer if I can get a Cardinal Hall of Famer even better I just never thought it would be with the great Lou Brock playing catch with a bag of peanuts but now that's my <laughs> checklist is off by one now because of you Mr. Brock great to see you how are you well we get to see you although I was not expecting a bag of peanuts so not just uh, one but two 
And yeah, you, you handle yeah. it with grace and ease. Well, generally you expect one, but two. <laughs> <laughs> that is a pull down the right field line off the bat of Jody Garrett, just foul. And the Cardinals, of course, have a lead of a three to one. You've got a big golf tournament coming up, and it's great that we have a chance to have you here to visit. It's August 4th. And you will have that out at Forest Hills. Big dinner, big auction, big golf tournament, and it's going to a lot of great kids here in St. Louis. Yes, in fact, we've been, this is our 16th year, and with Echo uh, Children Home and it also Echo uh, Foundation Fund that we're raising funds for. We've been at it by 16 years, as I pointed out. A uh, lot of excitement, and at the same time, we help a lot of kids who are in need. Echo4kids.org is the way to at least to register online also the number 993 9000 that's 993 9000 and I know a lot of our fans are curious about this it's an off day for the Cardinals as time is called by Edgar Gonzalez so not only will you be there but uh, who else from the Cardinals will be uh, representing the St. Louis Cardinals there well we're working on the list right now we don't know uh, we going to have what we call a putting contest so that the players who do come out uh, won't have to stay all day but by the same token uh, that we'd be putting for an organization or uh, one of the teams. Uh, I've seen that kind of a contest at several golf tournaments. It's sort of interesting. Can you putt? Oh, yeah, I'll be there. Okay. Don't worry, I'm coming. <laughs> All right. And I, I plan on winning and taking the pot of money and then donating <laughs> it back to the <laughs> Echo Foundation. Right. Yeah, I would do that. Now, for people that don't know about the Echo Foundation, I mentioned it goes to children in St. Louis, but what exactly is the Echo Foundation? Well, the Echo Foundation and Echo Children Home has been around since 1889, somewhere back in there. And it is a home for abused kids, people who, kids who are on the street know where to go. It, it has always been a home for them. And so we got involved about uh, 16 years ago and we've raised money every year. And hopefully we can just do good for those who really are in need. Well, we decided to have you on. We, we came up with the state a couple of weeks ago, and obviously we needed to match up schedules, and it just happened to have Greg Maddox on the mound tonight. <laughs> so how, how much fun do you get watching a guy like Greg Maddox perform and, and doing what he's doing year in and year out here in the major leagues? Well, as a hitter, you know, you have to approach him a little different. Uh, early in the game, you can get to a guy like that. Mm -hmm. and. Consequently, we saw here tonight, we, we scored twice in the first inning, but you got to get to it. Uh, he finds a rhythm, and then suddenly, everything he throws, the bottom, the, I call it, the ball disappears. Sure. And uh, it's not fair to a hitter to have a ball come looking like a fastball, and the next thing you know, it disappears. And we were talking about this just the other night with Ferguson, Jenkins, Gibson, sure. and Gaylord Perry uh, at the recent All-Star game. In, all about the ball disappearing. How much fun was the All-Star game for you? Well, it was exciting. We were on a uh, parade, and we got a chance to wave at probably looked like half of the world. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it In seemed New York like that. City. Yeah. That's a pulled foul off the bat of Brian Giles, who lined out to center, and again for the 16th annual YTB Lou Brock Hall of Fame Golf Classic at Forest Hills Country Club. August 4th again Cardinal players will be there hopefully some from the management team Al and I will be there number to call 993 9000 to find out more and of course you'll be gracious enough I'm sure to sign autographs take pictures whatnot. Yeah well, that's part of the uh, uh, as you know when you go to a golf tournament you have a golf tournament uh, in your name uh, certainly you got to do all those things uh, but those people too come for the reason and that is have a big heart to help. No question. There's Ludwig who made the all star team and you know you were one of the guys we had you on I guess it was maybe second third week into the regular season Cardinals got off to a pretty good start and you were one of the only people that said I saw this team in spring training and I thought you know what they're going to be pretty good they've got a good manager pitching staff needs to come around I like their lineup and lo and behold here they are you know final little stretch here of the regular season just over two months to go and they're 11 games above 500 Lou. You know that's, an, that's the incredible part of it and uh, there's the man who anchored this whole thing which is Albert Pujols. Uh, but the same token they were a solid team in spring training which means that the highs and low was not there. Um, when you see that that team has a chance to compete and certainly they are. I think the pitching really has surprised everyone. No question about it starting staff in particular. Yeah and uh, most of those that staff didn't come together until spring training and they didn't even know each other. Uh, we got Lowe's come along and I, I recall one day asking 
what do you do? He said, well, pitch. I, had, I said, I haven't seen you pitch. Is that <laughs> but, right? Yeah, but that was all in spring training. We all had a chance to uh, sit around and, and just chat baseball. Well, he's 12-2 and two and picked up another win last night and surprising everybody. And, of course, the Cardinals have Carpenter coming around, Wainwright coming around. So if they're still in this thing in a month, you get those two big horses back, that could mean all the difference in the world. Well, it certainly could, it can because uh, Wainwright, uh, we know what he can do. Sure. Uh, Carpenter may be a question mark, but uh, by the same token, when they all come back together, uh, I would hate to be the manager trying to make a decision who I pitch. Sure. We saw the Cardinals generate a run with a walk, a sacrifice, a steal, an infield out. The steal was of third base. How often, for our fans that don't know, especially our young fans, you were one of the great uh, base stealers of all time. I mean, how often did you steal third, and was it harder or easier than trying to steal second base? Well, I didn't steal third base a lot, so right. it was harder. I, I probably stole third base about 36 times in uh, uh, maybe my career. There's a base uh, hit into center. Antiel will throw into third, and not in time. Strong throw. But go back to what you're talking about with the steals. Well, uh, stealing third base was a little tough for me simply because I had good hitters. Uh, they didn't like the fact that you stole third base. Right. And they say very often, we can knock you in from second. You just get to second. And so that was the whole idea. Uh, but in later years, you got a chance to steal third. So I, I uh, if you had to guess between the two, third base is a lot easier. But I tell you, it's hard to go in the dugout with your friends. Sure, I bet it is. Yeah. There's Dave Duncan out to visit with. Uh, Braden Looper, the great Lou Brock, the Hall of Famer, is with us, and uh, always nice to have a chat with you. We just saw Ricky and Keel throw from center field. You saw Clemente play. You played against him. Uh, how would you compare the arms of some of the guys and the greats that you played against or saw to that of Ricky and Keel right now in center field? Well, you're looking at a guy and and Keel uh, who is a good athlete mm -hmm. and a good athlete. He can throw. He can hit. Uh, to unfortunate for him when he first came along. He's so good as an athlete, you had nowhere to put him. So you made him a pitcher. And then now he has the best arm as an outfielder, one of the best arms in baseball. And he loves to throw. So you got to have a guy with an arm who loves to throw. Oh, uh, otherwise, to do that. it doesn't work. Yeah. And he had those two great throws in Colorado. We've seen him get great jumps. And maybe that's the most surprising thing for a guy that's trying to learn this position, for the most part, trying to learn in playing center field in the major leagues and the jumps that he gets does that surprise you at all to see that he doesn't take many false steps out there. Well again I, I I'm amazed at the fact that he's adapted to that uh, quite easily mm -hmm. uh, certain plays he looked like uh, <laughs> looked like Edmonds out there. Yeah exactly. Uh, so he has good baseball sense good judgment on the bases good judgment in the outfield and that's hard to do with a new stadium like uh, the new Bush Stadium here you're trying which is developing his own personality and at the same time there's shadows that you don't know about and then kills has uh, done a pretty good job with that. Tell our fans uh, for you being at the all star game the entire process of what went on for you and maybe what we can anticipate uh, happening next year. Well I saw half of the world in the, in, in the <laughs> parade and hopefully if we do a parade I think that's actually bring in the players to the fans those who cannot get into a, get into a game. I uh, can't get a ticket to get a game and this is one of the unique uh, ways of baseball mm -hmm. bringing the players to the fans and you got uh, uh, what you saw on the field is all of the Hall of Famers coming out. It was tremendous. Uh, I got a chance to uh, shake hand with Albert and all of the other kids who are in baseball. I call them kids. So they were an all star game and uh, all star team and they all were excited. Yankee Stadium last all star game all of those things the big event itself for the closing of uh, Yankee Stadium sure. for the all star game. That was a base hit by Headley and uh, that's now three consecutive hits and a hit by pitch and again uh, Echo Foundation August 4th August 4th <coughs> uh, we got a sponsor YTV going to be uh, our first sponsor this time around and certainly uh, we are happy that they are They're the title sponsor. And we got a lot of people uh, hopefully who could come out to this golf tournament and, and get involved with us. So we uh, make an appeal to all of you who are listening uh, called 933-9000 uh, and actually extension 125. You can get the person who really going to uh, put your name down and at the same time uh, ask you to 
to participate. Goes for a great cause and uh, always wonderful to see you. You look great. Stick around. We'll play some catch. I've got more <laughs> bags of peanuts to my left. So if you want to stay here, you're more than welcome to. Well, that's what happened at Echo with kids once in a while. They just asked the question, you want to play catch? <laughs> yeah, that's great. You and I'm sure catch. you oblige. Well, yeah, oh, indeed. Always good to see you. Thank you. Thanks, Lou. Great Lou Brock with us, the Hall of Famer. Still calls St. Louis home and doing some wonderful things for charity here in town. Well, the Padres have tied it up. It's 3-3. No balls and two strikes. And this pitch is popped up. Who wants it? Shallow left center. It'll be Rick and Keel for out number two. So Headley is out number two. And it brings in Khalil Green. Green is homer tonight. Again, that number, 993 9000. 993 9000. If you'd like to take part in Lou Brock's golf tournament coming up on August 4th. Two outs for Green with two runners on. And a pitch that's a strike on the outside corner. Always fun to visit with Lou Brock. Such a nice man. And I know the players get a kick out of it as well, seeing the Hall of Famer come through. The 0 1 pitch, Green taps it foul, and that's strike two. Well, you and uh, Mr. Brock, I guess when you got 3,000 hits, you wanted to see offense, huh? Bam, there it was. Long team was hit. <laughs> and you have a fundraiser coming up tomorrow. We'll talk about that. A little later in our telecast as Green strikes out to end the top of the third, but San Diego has tied it up. Two runs here in the top of the third, and it's 3 3. Who holds due up second? Baseball tonight on FSM Midwest is brought to you by your St. Louis area Kia retailers. Kia, the power to surprise. By Aflac. Aflac, ask about it at work. By Taco Bell's new Protista Freeze. Available in two delicious flavors topped with real fresh strawberries. And by Bank of America, the official bank of the St. Louis Cardinals. Ludwig is swinging a miss, and we're underway here in the bottom of the third. Always nice to visit with Lou Brock. I get a kick out of it. He's such a nice man, and oh, I was very where's fortunate. that Cardinal red very proudly too. Yes, and talking with lovely Reverend Jackie, talking how they came back from the, the weekend festivities, the All Star festivities, and then getting ready to head up to Cooperstown next week. For the Hall of Fame induction ceremonies. Goose Gossage. Ludwig rips it into left field for a base hit. He's one for two with a strikeout and that single. This week, Fox Saturday Baseball. Gonzalez and the Padres. That's Adrian. They'll take on the Cardinals, Albert Pujols. And that will be a 2.30 Central Fox Saturday Baseball tomorrow. Matt Vaskirjian will have the call with Mark Race tomorrow at 2.30. And I was very lucky as a young player that uh, Lou kind of took me under his wing and taught me the ropes. Now when you have Lou Brock and Bob Gibson and Joe Torrey and McCarver, Carlton for a while, and people like that, you know, when you're 20 years of age, it's uh, you know it's a little overwhelming. No doubt. First pitch strikes, brought to you by Chili's. He's faced 11 hitters, nine first pitch strikes. But I'm sure you were smart enough to take in what they had to say and just be quiet. Well, like I said, I was a nice little mama's boy, and then they corrupted me, and I've been thanking them ever since. I bet. First pitch to Albert is taken low and away. Mark Grace was saying how great it was in the pregame show to visit with the Hall of Famers, and then he said, "Well, future Hall of Famers too, guys like Albert Pujols. You think about his numbers. If he stays healthy, where they might be, some of the best ever. Something I have noticed here at the ballpark, and I don't know if you have as well, but similar to that of McGuire, with every time that he comes up, the flash bulbs are popping." Seems like every at bat now. Now it's even past 300. That that seemed to get it going, but every time he's up, you see it. Well, longevity, and you know, I mean, he's. I would like to think maybe at the third, third uh, of his career. 23, 24 years. 
One one pitch. What would his numbers be but you talk about a model of consistency and the Hall of Fame is that you know he's, this is eight season and you have to have 10 years to even be eligible. Maddox is in his 23rd year. 350 wins and these are the two guys that just don't seem to get hurt very often either. Here's a 2 1. Who holds off the glove of Maddox into center. That's going to help Ludwig get all the way to third. It's loaded up. A base hit for Pujols, a near double play, and I'm sure Maddox wishes he had that one back. Uh, you know, that's you get into a situation, and you know you're looking for a double play ball. You get a ground ball, you really can't fault the pitcher because he got what he wanted. It just found a hole. Big moments in sports, better in person. And this September, you can witness some of the world's best golfers: Sergio Garcia, Phil Mickelson. The BMW Championship. Tickets are limited, so order yours today at BMWChampionshipUSA.com or 847-724-4600. Here's Troy Gloss. Doubled his first time up. Cardinals are ready with five base hits against Maddox. A 3-3 game. Gloss on the first pitch. Pops it up. Shallow left. Headley makes the catch. Baseball clinics. The Cardinals Alumni Kids Clinics coming to Afton Athletic Association July 22nd and 24th. For more information, visit STLCardinals.com. That's a pitch that looked like Troy Gloss. Would launch. Sometimes you'll get the pitch, your eyes light up, and you just get a bit underneath it. One out for Ricky and Keel. Two RBIs tonight with his single with two outs back in the first. Runners had first and third. And Keel got a piece, foul tip, strike two. It's two pitches that were away. Last pitch at 77 miles an hour. And we've seen Maddox out with these lefties at times where that pitch will start out at the knees of the hitter and then tail back in on the inside portion of the plate and they are just locked up and frozen. He really has perfected that pitch to where the left handed batter gives up on it. And this probably a maybe a throw to first base. It's always my favorite pitch knock the knock the guy down flip the. You flip the thumb like this you knock the hitter down but today's baseball is throw to first. So two pitches away and let's see what he wants to come with here on 0 and 2 away again. They set up outside and here comes the 0 2 bounced in the dirt Hundley nice play to keep it in front. Cardinals at one point led two to nothing then three to one the Padres tied it up three three. The Cubs in the top of the fifth against the Astros lead it one to nothing. Keep an eye on that ball game. Milwaukee is in San Francisco tonight. And Hunley can't get together with Greg Maddox. Now, tell me what happens in this conversation. If you're Nick Hunley, you're talking to a guy with almost 800 starts, all the wins. If, goes, if I'm Nick Hundley, I just go out and say, wait a minute. I'll, I'll put down whatever you just tell me what do you want? No, that's what you say is, is Mr. Mr. Maddox. I'm a little confused. What would you like to throw here? <laughs> yeah. And I will oblige. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. That's out number two. Tune in tomorrow at 11 a.m. New episode of Cardinals Crew will show you highlights from the Fellowship of Christian Athletes Fantasy Baseball Camp. Cardinals crew brought to you by Shriners Hospitals for Children tomorrow at 11, Monday and Wednesday at 2.30.
right here on FSN. So back to back singles and then Gloss flied out and a strikeout of Ricky and Keel and Molina falls behind nothing in one. And it popped up the first time on a pitch that was up. But a lot of times he'll do the damage with two outs. Very productive two out hitter. How about Molina batting well above 300 now he's at 311. The 0 1. Hit to short Khalil Green with plenty of time settles and throws a strike over to first Cardinals strand two. they have stranded three on the night. Hunley Maddox Garrett coming up all tied up as we move to the fourth. Top of the fourth it's three three and away we go. First pitch by Looper is a strike. Nick Hunley struck out his first time up it'll be Hunley the eighth place hitter. Then Maddox and Garrett. 3 3 game. There's a line drive that's pulled foul and into the seats. Cooled off a little bit here tonight. Another packed house on this Friday night here in St. Louis. Glad you're with us on FSM Midwest. Dan McLaughlin, Al Roboski with you. And here comes an 0 2 pitch. Pulled foul again. You got the young catchers, Hunley, who's facing Looper right now. and. Carlin but Josh Bard will probably rejoin the team next week but Bud Black was telling me he's very concerned about Michael Barrett. Now he fouled the ball off his face and had to have reconstructive surgery but the fact that he is a catcher that they're very concerned in long term you know being able to have the uh, those fractures heal with foul balls and tips. That'll go to the wall, and Schumacher will have to dig it out. It's a leadoff double by Nick Hundley. As you talked about earlier, Maddox can handle the bat, and that means sacrificing, and that will be a spot right here. Saturday, August 2nd, Creep Court Camera Photo Night here at Bush Stadium. Gates open at 4:15. We hope to see you here. August 2nd, Creep Court Camera Photo Night. The accountant slash librarian, Mark Grace, said he Maddox should have been a librarian. Just a fierce competitor, great athlete, very good golfer, but you see him in street clothes and you're totally unimpressed. But this guy is a winner. He's up there to sacrifice. First pitch, a strike. Also a very good golfer. Good golfer. Has five career home runs. Lives in Las Vegas. No balls in a strike on Greg Maddox. Corners are in. Pujols is charging. The bunt to third is thrown away. Schumacher will fire to the plate. Pujols nice pick and he throws that into center field. Maddox on his way to third and Keels throw not in time. How about that Greg Maddox winds up all the way at third and San Diego leads it four to three. A couple of errors on that play. Uh, Molina's seventh there and Pujols his third error and maybe that was the game plan to wear him out on the base pass. But gets the sack down and here you see Molina throws the ball wide of gloss. That's the first That's air. That's the first air. And Schumacher gets it back here. Albert cuts it off, blindly throws, and way off the mark. So Maddox goes from second to, to third on the second air. So sacrifice two airs on the play. And still nobody out. This is Jody Garrett back to the top of the lineup for San Diego, and they have the lead for three. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. These two teams have. Committed the fewest errors coming into tonight's action. Garrett, a high fly ball out to right. Ludwig is back at the wall and it's gone. A two run homer, Jody Garrett. And just like that, it's six to three in favor of the Padres. Wow. How quickly this game has changed. And Tony is going to go out. 
We got we made some roster changes so a lot of protection down there in that bullpen. Brad Thompson is warming up and it looks like he's ready to enter this ball game. Still nobody out. Padres have picked up the lead with three runs here at the top of the fourth. Baseball tonight on FSM Midwest is presented by Southwest Airlines. And what a change in this ball game! At one point, the Cardinals led three to one. Now they trail six to three. Our call to the bullpen is brought to you by Chevrolet. And it's Brad Thompson, a record of one and two. This will be his 11th appearance, and the Cardinals have made some moves. And they have picked up Randy Flores, activated from the 15 day DL. Kelvin Jimenez has been recalled from Memphis. Joe Mather and Chris Perez, option two, AAA. And I guess maybe the biggest surprise is Perez. We knew that Flores was coming back, but, uh, you know, Chris Perez, Al, needs to develop a secondary pitch. There's no. Other way to describe it is a lot of these major league hitters are just sitting on that fastball. Well, he's going to have a, a very successful major league career, but he's gone back with the instruction to improve and work on that slider. Don't even really be concerned so much for the results. And a good start for Brad Thompson. So it, it, in some ways, it, it wasn't surprising at all for me. And there's a good slider. Keep that ball down there and. Brad, when they make contact, is going to get his ground balls, and when he does that, he usually is very, very successful. So a rough outing for Looper tonight, as he gives up eight hits and six runs. And then you have Mather sent down, and bring another fresh arm, and I think that's the key. There's a broken bat and a base hit in the right off the bat of Giles. As I believe that is a maple bat there that was. Flying towards Albert Pujols. Well, you almost every time you see a ball shattered like that, it's you. First thing you think of is a maple bat. So let's see if he hits it off the end of the bat. Not as far on the end as I thought, but just sawed him off, and that barrel goes flying. Here is Adrian Gonzalez with one out. I told you I talked to a bat maker yesterday of Maple Bats, and they said primarily their business in dealing with major leaguers now is with the Maple Bats. And they had a few theories as to why the Maple Bats are shattering. One, they said cold weather earlier this season, more people throwing cutters, and probably the most logical the variance in the weight from the end of the bat, the big barrels, and the small handles. That would seem to make the most sense. Yeah, and that's why, you know, when you, you think of something like that, you know, if it's hit right off the end of the bat, you're just going to break in half. A low strike, and it's two balls and one strike on Gonzalez. By the way, Giles is two for three. Gonzalez with an RBI tonight. He's one for two. The 2 1. Foul ball. The 2 and 2. Very first cup bat that I ever saw. Lou Brock got from Japan. And it was it was a totally different type of wood. And I don't know if it was somewhat bamboo bamboo or something, but it had a different uh, stain on it and seemed like it was much harder. But it was the first cup bat where they Hollow out the end of the bat and and make a little cup in there to take a few ounces out. And did you notice if the bat was breaking more? Uh, I did not notice that. It seemed like it was a much harder wood than you know the ash bats of that era. And because of the finish on it, it seemed like it was much harder. But it was it was not it, it had a very thin barrel, so it was more balanced also. To, you know, so I don't remember it breaking. Here's a 3 2 instead of check on the runner over at first, and that's Giles. But what's happening now is just ridiculous, and it needs to be addressed before a player. And it, it seems like an infielder, or you know, you certainly get 
nervous about the pitcher but also the potential of a fan that's here. They're following the, the flight of the ball or a ground ball. They're not even paying attention to the bat. Well, the pirate hitting coach long was struck in the face by a, a portion of a bat when he, he was has in, nerve damage when he's yeah, in his face and the one at the other aspect of a maple bat is it does not have a distinct sound when it breaks. It's a line drive foul. You know how many times you're up here and you can hear a bat crack or break and you go oh, there's a broken bat. Well with a maple it doesn't have that sound. So when he was watching his hitter hit the ball he never looked for the barrel because he was watching the fly of the bat because it uh, it didn't have a different sound and then the barrel hit him in the face took about 17 stitches and as you said still has some nerve damage and a foul ball. I mean I don't think you'd see them completely banned but. I do think there will be an adjustment with the levels of how they keep the weight and the length. I, I think they have to do something about it. And I, I would assume the players would agree too. Well, you would hope so, but I mean, players are so superstitious, or they're so accustomed to they don't want to deviate from from anything. The other aspect is with the popularity of the maple bats, if you ban them. It would take a long time to replace all the, the maple bats and get people accustomed to using the ash or some other type of wood. And what they're saying now is that if you look at the majority of young players, not all, but the majority of them, first, second, third year players, they're almost all using maple because that's what they used in the minors. Deep center and Keel back on the track and makes the catch. Giles back to first. Good play by Rick and Keel. And that was another hard hit ball. This is a series if you're the Cardinals in my mind Al you've got to take three or four if not try to sweep before Milwaukee gets here. Fair enough to say that. I think it is with a team that is so far off the pace they're in last in the West ten and a half games behind in a division with nobody playing 500 baseball. This is a team and there's so many young triple A players here that have been decimated by injuries you got to take advantage of it. As you mentioned Milwaukee playing at San Francisco tonight the Cubs in the top of the six leading Houston one to nothing Jim Edmonds with a home run. Here's the 0 one by Thompson knew that marriage would be good for him. Oh it's been great so far one game and a home run. Kind of time this season the looper has not lasted five innings. Excuse me Al. Yeah you kind of get doubt that this game is going to stay six three. And that is just foul. Remember Maddox really. You know at this stage in his career there's not much more than a, a five inning pitcher even though. Through three innings he's only thrown 40 pitches. We were talking with some of the San Diego folks they. Say that their bullpen has really been disappointing. In just about every facet, they miss a guy like Doug Brokale, who was very good for them. Clay Meredith has not been the same pitcher. It's tap foul. Heath Bell was, you know, the heir apparent to Hoffman and Trevor. You know, the all-time saves leader is kind of nearing the end of his his realm, and you know, that's a tough transition to go from a guy that's been so great and in such a a cult hero in, in San Diego to kind of even now at times he's been booed and that was unthinkable. Even for a guy like that it, it's just such a tough spot as Isringhausen can tell you. Either the hero or the goat when you're the closer. People really don't remember the guys in the seventh or the sixth really the eighth that give up the runs it's always the ninth. As you can attest. 2 2 pitch and a swing and a miss. Strikeout for Thompson. His second in the inning, second on the night in relief of Looper. The air by Molina, costly. Jody Garrett with a home run. Thompson then finishing off the inning with a strikeout of Gonzalez and then of Kuzmanov. 6 3, midway through four. 
And here we go is Maddox. Will pitch here in the bottom of the fourth. That oh. is the one and only John Reynolds. Oh my goodness. Who has made his way from Los Angeles to St. Louis. We are blessed to be in his presence. If you follow us night in and night out, you know that during Blues telecast or our baseball coverage, John Reynolds, if we're out west, he is helping us. And, and that is Tim Garcia's idol. <laughs> Understandably so. This tourist is short, Khalil Green on a hop, makes the play. Our what's on tap is brought to you by Bud Light, and we will highlight the Sunday game. Tomorrow it is Big Fox at 2.30, and then Sunday at 12.30 on KSDK News Channel 5. Our Bud Light, what's on tap. And a strike. Six runs scored tonight marked the most run support the Padres have given Maddox since his second start of the season. Is that San Francisco? He is the fifth lowest run support in the big leagues. Happy birthday to Kip Wyatt of Marshall County, Kentucky. Huge Cardinal fan whose dad grows the best sweet corn we understand around. How about that? Happy birthday. Kip Wyatt. On the outside corner and a strikeout of Brad Thompson. Four strikeout for Maddox. This year when you can't be home to watch the Cardinals, check out MLB.tv. Find out more at STLCardinals.com. Brendan Ryan with a ground out in an RBI. That was back in the second. And that made it three to one in favor of St. Louis. And since then, five unanswered by the Padres. They lead it six to three. And a strike right down the middle. In that batter's box, you better be ready because you're going to see a first pitch strike. A little high, one ball, one strike. Here's a 1 1. Little low, two balls and a strike. Our Geico quote tonight Rogers Hornsby to be a good hitter, you've got to do one thing get a good ball to hit. Appropriate shooting Greg Maddox there. Little this, little that, just has that ability to know what. Kind of like what what speed a, a hitter is looking for and then how to disrupt it. You want to change up fastball away. 2 2. Up the middle base hit for Ryan. See Greg Maddox is also one of those guys too. He's got two outs. I got nobody on base. Why waste a change up that maybe I'll need that the third time up. And I'll just throw a pitch and I'm going to try and get a ground ball. Hopefully it'll be right at one of my fielders. It kind of stays up a little bit and Brendan Ryan hit hard enough to get it past Gonzalez the second baseman. And strike two Skip Schumacher the leadoff man who is over two. Fly to left and also struck out. Check on Brendan Ryan over at first. Even though there were two errors committed in that inning, the final inning for Looper, all six of his runs are earned because of the Garrett home run following. Winless skid right now for Looper. It's been about three weeks since he's won. He's lost his last two starts. But look at Maddox. He's in one for 12 starts. Nothing into the count.
Here's the 0-2. Base hit for Schumacher opposite way. Schumacher's had good success against San Diego this year in his career. Burton with about 400. Brings in Ludwig. He had bat here with two outs, Ludwig and Pujols on deck. Ludwig struck out the first time, but reached Maddox for a single his last time up. Solomon in three straight games leads the team in home runs. Is 21 tied with Ricky and Keel. 65 RBIs. Ludwig on the night, one for two. Pujols on deck. It's Ryan's first multi hit game since June 24th. Good speed standing out at second base. Schumacher at first. Ludwig represents the tying run at the plate. First pitch to him. Ludwig, a high fly ball. Left center field. At the track, it's at the wall. Out of here. This game is tied. Ludwig, a three run shot, and it's 6 6. Okay, San Diego didn't know Ryan Ludwig's an all-star. 22nd home run. That leads the team and now 68 RBIs and an average better than 290. Maddox is kicking himself with two out, three consecutive hits topped off by the three-run home run. Pujols on the first pitch. Hits it out of play. We saw that replay with the SunTrip.com cam that's brought to you by the SunTrip Automotive Group. Still only 56 pitches thrown. And how about, did he have Albert Pujols out in front on oh, that foul ball? Big time. Albert hitting it over the visitor's dugout. But this is where Pujols is so good to make that adjustment, even with a guy like Maddox. Sure. They set up outside the 0-1. A rocket into center field. Garrett. Diving catch comes up with it takes a hit away from Pujols, but a home run by Ryan Ludwig a three run shot number 22 RBI 66 67 68 brand new game it's 6 6. Monday the Cardinals begin a four game series against the Milwaukee Brewers and the entire series is on FSN Midwest that'll be presented in high definition tune in Monday at 5 and Tuesday through Thursday at 6 on your home of the Cardinals FSN Midwest right before the home run let's take a look see the young catcher comes out and talks to Maddox they go over what they want to do kind of looked up like you know like something going on and he may be out of this ball game. Pujols will take it for the first out and Chase Headley is retired. So Brad Thompson takes over for tonight's starter, Braden Looper, who only lasted three innings and gave up six earned runs. There's activity in the Padres bullpen. Maddox is scheduled to be the fourth hitter this inning, so they may not get to him. Leo Green looks at a strike. He has an opposite field home run. Corey is warming up a right hander. Brian Corey. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Same spot, strike two. Boy, what a year for. There's Brian Corey. What a year for Ludwig. A breakout year. It's taken a while to get to this point, but tremendous. Green strikes out. Just look at his body language. That is not the same player we have seen in the past. Not no. talking about Ludwig, but Khalil Green. Khalil Green just in just ways walking back, just defeated. Mm. Home run the first time up, but a pair of strikeouts since then, and that's a third strikeout for Brad Thompson since he's entered this ball game. Three pitches in the same spot. Good sinking action there. So two outs, and here is Nick Hundley. Hunley looks at an inside strike. He got things started in the downfall of Looper in the fourth inning with a double. Breaking ball just missed. 
We say this a lot but it is a chance for Brad Thompson to showcase himself. Make a case to try to get more time on the mound. Well, I think he's very valuable in this situation as a long man. Yeah I agree. And Maddox is not the on deck hitter. So you presume that's it. You really do but. Strike out of the outside corner. Of Nick Hundley. Good work by Thompson. Two strikeouts in the inning. Four already in the game. Six six midway through five. Six six game and we remind you it's Fox Saturday baseball tomorrow at two thirty in high definition. Matt Vaskersian Mark Race two thirty on Fox. Also Red Sox at Angels Fox Saturday baseball. Six six game bottom of the uh, fifth. And a new pitcher is in for the San Diego Padres. Brian Corey in our Chevrolet call to the bullpen. He's acquired from Boston exchange for a player to be named or cash considerations. Primarily was with uh, Patek, a AAA affiliate of the Boston Red Sox last season, and was a September call up and had some success. Finds himself pitching here with San Diego. The pitch count wasn't high for Greg Maddox. You have to wonder if something was. Or on with him. Well, I heard mean, so. Yeah, I mean, it's just one of those situations where I don't think the pitch count really matters. He allowed six runs in four innings, eight hits, and turned this game over to the bullpen. Fifty-seven pitches for Maddox, forty-two of them strikes. And the first pitch taken low and away by Troy Gloss. Lost tonight is doubled and scored and also fly to left. Cardinals were able to get four solo home runs last night against Jake Peavy. Gloss a couple of the times. And then tonight you've got Maddox. They've knocked him out after four innings. Big dog is thinking along the lines of a lot of fans. Uh, you talked about how this bullpen for San Diego underachieving. And we've seen the Cardinals bullpen have their problems, but we've also seen them be very good. So Brad Thompson throwing the ball effectively and taking command. 2 1 pitch. Base hit into right. Everything falling right now for Gloss. Seemed to be off the end of his bat. I think you're right. I think he. Not sure he really even saw this, but Corey starts him out with a slider for ball one. He comes back with a fastball, another fastball, and it looked like a slider off the end of the bat. A little better swing looking at the replay than where it looked uh, initially. But Gloss two for three tonight. You know, his bat just seems quicker too than what we saw at yes. the beginning of the year. Uh, I think it's no doubt about it. Rick and Keel, nobody out, runner at first. Ian Keel with a home run last night. Takes a ball down and in. And Keel with a base hit back in the first two RBI struck out in the third against Maddox. Six six game. Glad you're with us here at FSN for game two this four game series. The 1 0 pitch. I saw Maddox that lasted bat with Ricky and Keel everything was away. A lot of off speed pitches change ups away. 2 and 0. I think that is the book. If you if you have the ability to throw an, a good off speed pitch and keep it away from Ankeel, that's your best choice. Right there. Yep. You make a mistake and you throw a fastball and even though Corey's a right hander, we've seen left handers that have very good stuff that when they make good pitches they get him, but if they make a careless pitch in the middle of the plate Look out because he has the ability to take that one out. Two balls, one strike. There's change up again, which is off to the slider. Rick has also, you know, really shown the ability to hit mistakes up in the zone. Well, that's it. I mean, you know, he's geared so much for the fastball or something hard. 
That's why he falls victim to the off speed pitch particularly down and away. But if you make a mistake he can hurt you. Here's another slider. Popped up along the infield. And that's the first out. Brings him Molina. And I really think today's pitchers on an average do not have the ability to spot their fastballs or really exploit hitters weaknesses. Anytime Molina's up with a runner at first you think about the possibility of a double play. Tonight he is popped out to first and also grounded out to short. 0 for 2 but still as we talked about earlier Al here he is hitting 310. With 65 games to go. And I think his, as he do, will develop the power. I'm not going to be a, you know, maybe a 20 25 guy, home run type guy, but he'll be in, in double figures and consistently around 15, I think, as he matures. I think he can go back to the postseason of 06 where he gained all that confidence. Hit and run was on. Gonzalez steps on the bag. That's his only play with a fair ball. Molina, good candidate to do that double play. Or rather, the uh, hit and run, excuse me. Try to avoid that double play. And there's two outs, and here's Isturis. There's a lot of different ways you can stand on the mound, but looks like Brian Corey has a, an idea that. Very rarely. It looks like he almost stands on top of the mound right there and then just puts his toe over it. A lot of people want to put here and almost dig a little trench to where they can push off. But you don't get very much leg drive when you're when you're standing there. He also has that extra protective right in the front of his right foot that little Extra rubber that you see. Yeah, because he drags the toe right there. But you know, in, instead of being in front of the rubber, what do you call that? Al? Pitching toe. Very tough, Dan. That that right there is called a pitching toe. Pitching toe. It's very scientific. I, I just could not get that terminology. No, I, I just it just never came to me. Pitching toe. Pitching toe. I've got it. I'm ready to move on. Sixth inning coming up. Cardinal Baseball on FSM Midwest is brought to you by Rico. Move your ideas forward with Rico dependability. By your local St. Louis Jeep dealers. And by Jack in the Box. We don't make it until you order it. Brad Thompson back to work. Two innings, four strikeouts. It's a 6 6 game here in the top of the six at Bush Stadium in downtown St. Louis. Well, Thompson, so far, so good, partner, with those two innings of work. I came in and he's only allowed one base runner and struck out four. So they keeping the ball down. Strikeout pitches are coming up empty. And he has the ability that you would think he's going to go four or five innings in this situation. And the first pitch a breaking ball his last inning very efficient. And on the night Thompson has only thrown 30 pitches. That pitch in the dirt. One ball one strike. You know Dan as you look at the. The second half here and we're getting very good news as on Carpenter and Wainwright. And I, I, there's no doubt in my mind that. Carpenter is going to go into the rotation. Well, he is. I talked to Dave Duncan about it. Well, that's what I mean. It's like there was people who were speculating to do the Morris deal. That's not going to happen. He's going to go in and he's going to he's going to be a real plus from the get go. But I could envision a scenario where you put Wainwright back into the closer role. Interesting. That would be very interesting if that would be the case. Pitch short is Turris. Long throw and an out. In talking with Dave Duncan, and I asked him specifically about it, would you like to see Carpenter 
take that road that Matt Morris did coming off the same surgery and he said absolutely not different case and the way that he has been rehabbing he has been rehabbing and gearing up to be a starter and that's the way it's going to be once he gets here and 100 percent and just to accentuate that you go back to spring training they were thrilled when they saw him and they've been doing everything they can to back him down so I mean he's going to he will not take the full 30 days and he'll be on the clock starting Sunday but I would I would say you know, two starts maybe I, I, I think you've got to give him a little bit three to four but I mean once he comes back and and he'll be around mid mid August he's going to go right into that rotation and he's going to be a big jolt and a big positive uplift to this ball club and why you see you know Milwaukee gets Sabathia and the Cubs get hardened if you're the Cardinals that's your trade exactly for your starting rotation and then you start to work with your bullpen and, and maybe a bat and and now and if everything falls into place with your bullpen and and Franklin and Izzy and the supporting cast down there they're doing the job you get another bonus putting Wainwright into your into your rotation but if you still had some problems down there I think you could put a lights out closer and have Wainwright just to finish this year. There's a base hit out to left for Garrett, their leadoff man, with one out. The best damn sports show period is the greatest nightly sports show on television. Chris Rose, John Sally, and Miss Thompson, all part of it. The best damn sports show period. And that's uh, tonight coming up following the postgame show here on FSN Midwest. So then you're saying there could be the potential of having, you know, three guys that could close games out if. You would go with Wainwright to the bullpen. Well, and Franklin, and, Izzy, and then Wainwright. And of course, that involves, and, and Thompson is just holding, trying to see what the batter is going to do. And Gonzalez here. But Garrett is five for eight in stolen bases over at first base with a three hit night. Ron Ballone is throwing in the Cardinal bullpen. They got a second lefty with Flores being activated. But a lot of that is, you know, is predicated on. On one, you have your, all your starters pitching effectively, and you still have a, a a problem late in a ball game, and that really has not been a a significant issue. Franklin's done a nice job. Easy, I'm sure, is going to get some opportunities to close, but they are concerned about keeping fresh arms in that bullpen. No balls and a strike on Edgar Gonzalez. We saw Wainwright when he was in the bullpen first time through. Boy, he was magnificent for the Cardinals. And we like him in the rotation, but I mean, it's 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 a situation where, you know, because of this year, I think he would be the one that you put out there, and and you know, you'd like to think his arm's going to be fresh and be strong for the last couple, you know, month and a half. In the air to right field and a base hit. Ludwig tried to deke him. He'll fire into third base and it hits the runner. Bad break because probably would have been thrown out as hit the runner and deflected away from Gloss, and so no chance to tag the runner going from first to third. If you're Gonzalez, if you're running hard to first, shouldn't you be at second if that ball scoots away? Well, you you would think. And you've got the play in front of you. You can see that he tried to deke. Now he's going to come up and charge. It's a high throw, so no cutoff. So you're right. He should be out there at uh, third base. So runners at uh, first and third. That's going to be it for Brad Thompson. Back to back hits. Giles coming up. Lefty coming in. It'll be Ron Ballone in a 6 6 game with one out here on the top of the sixth. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the St. Louis Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Ron Ballone comes in there first and third one out last two appearances for Ballone have been situations like this come in to face one left handed batter he struck both of them out including last night. But he's going to have to get two lefties here tonight. Giles, couple of base hits. He's also lined out, hit the ball hard every time up. First pitch is strike. 
Cardinals if you're just joining us have activated Randy Flores so another lefty is out there for Tony La Russa. and also Jimenez has been recalled for the third time so another fresh arm in that bullpen Rush Springer throwing behind Ballone. bullpen should be well rested coming off the all star break the 0 1 pitch check swing. I think this is where you'd like to see Valone with just the lefty lefty matchups. Yeah, when when Ron is 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 come in and been a left handed specialist he's done a very good job lefties are batting under 200 against him. One one pitch take it a little low. Hey congratulations by the way to St. Louis and Jay Williamson. He is in a tie for 22nd at the British Open makes the cut for the first time ever the St. Louisan. Had a great day today didn't he. How about the conditions too. He's five over right now for the championship. Finished second at the John Deere. Good block by Molina. The count runs to three and one. You've got Gonzalez Adrian Gonzalez on deck. David Duvall and. Guy named the Shark. How about that? It could be Retro Sunday. This is a the British Open. A very tough hitter for a lefty trying to trick a guy with your breaking ball because of the batting eye of Giles. You have to throw him strikes. Base hit in the right. Padres back on top, and that makes it to seven to six in favor of San Diego. That's the fourth hard hit ball by Giles. Oh, he's he's such a good hitter and he's walked over a thousand times so he's always going to be in a hitter's count make him throw a fastball and he can turn up. Runners at first and second with one out. And here is Adrian Gonzalez. He's flied out he is singled with an RBI he's also popped out. Outfield shades him to pull with one out. Check swing did not go, says Jerry Davis, third base umpire. Still a long ways to go in this game. San Diego has out hit the Cardinals 12 9, and they lead it 7 6. Two lefties, as we mentioned, Al out there for Tony La Russa. Why do you think Valone was the choice? Well, because Valone has done the job of late, and Tony La Russa has confidence in him facing the lefty. You know, you just brought Flores off the disabled list. He did make three appearances, did not allow a run in four innings of work, but Valone's been the hot hand. Opposite field, pretty well hit down the left field line. It'll slice and get out of play. Two balls and one strike. Cubbies now tied up, bottom of the seventh, 1 1 with Houston. I mentioned that Jim Edmonds has the RBI for Chicago with a home run. Houston got close for a little bit after about two months of play, and they have faded. Alan. The rotation was suspect and with Oswald having a problem with a, a hip injury. They are really. Having problems but they have a, a ton of offense but they've been disappointing too. win last night so the Cardinals are four games out Milwaukee five games back Cardinals lead in the wild card. Cubs lead the division best record 57 and 38. 2 2 pitch. Ground ball, pool holes back in. That's one on to first, and he stays on the bag. Double play. Nicely done by Ron Ballone. Three to six to one double play. Not an easy double play to be turned here by the Cardinals. First of all, the backhand by Albert Pujols, then Valone quickly a race to the bag and then trying to find the bag. 
the stretch and a nice play. That's an athletic play there by Ron Ballone. Are you sure? Yes, it was. He's left handed. He's a pitcher. It was an athletic play. Suntrip.com <laughs> camera brought to you by I knew where you were going, brought to you by the Suntrip Automotive Group. I knew exactly where that, you were going. That could uh, surface in kangaroo court, a play like that. You know, it's a Friday night. And, and it's a hungo. That's right. You know what Friday nights. You never know. That could. You, you're you know what they thinking, bring. You're thinking that's a competition, huh? He's lefty. He's in the bullpen. I'd say he's the clubhouse leader right now. Well, you never know. And seven to six in favor of the Padres here in the bottom of the six and this is Adam Kennedy first pitch is a strike. Really not a bad seat in the house including the one right behind us. <laughs> the 0 1 pitch Kennedy lines out the third. New pitcher is Adams. Mike Adams who appeared in last night's ball game he'll come into this action. And I know some of the folks here at the ballpark they were treated to a just a an outstanding meal thanks to the fine folks here at Bush Stadium. Brendan Ryan got an RBI ground out his first time up and a base hit oh, trying to find his him. way on and that's a foul ball. He does that an awful lot but I'm not sure that we've ever seen an actual bunt single by Brendan Ryan. The do factor. I like it. You definitely do because he hasn't hit one yet. Some of the folks uh, here at Bush Stadium here to watch batting practice and kind of kind of found their way into uh, a meal huh? a free meal. Oh yeah you never know I mean the fine people here at the ballpark willing to treat anybody. No balls and two strikes on so Brendan Ryan. <laughs> Mr. Reynolds learned something in uh, school in, in Missouri huh. Oh yeah. He's really not you know I, Tim I don't Garcia's know if idol. Tim learned an awful lot from <laughs> John Reynolds our good buddy. Here's a one two pitch. But the amazing thing is there, there's so many nooks and crannies here at the ballpark. That you, you can just find all kinds of different food. And Without different, pain. with different ways to get a meal here. And, and that cashier really you know, doesn't mean anything, huh? Brendan pops it up and foul behind home plate. Especially when he has a friend like Dan McLaughlin to take care of the damages. We need to talk. <laughs> there he is. Surveying the scene. <laughs> 2 2 pitch outside. Knucklehead Productions wins another. Oh, yeah. 3 and 2 is the count on Brendan Ryan with Skip Schumacher on deck. Brendan with the RBI also runs scored tonight in a single. One out, nobody on, and Brendan is still looking for that first home run. Here in 2008, three-two pitch, and a walk. Didn't miss by much, but it's a one-out walk. It'll be a Cardinals baseball player. Only a select few are chosen, but everyone could be part of the fun. Sundays at Bush Stadium during the two hours prior to every home game. Enjoy fun games, great prizes in the Ford Plaza, compliments of the Science Center. Ticket information, number to call is 345-9000 or visit us online at stlcardinals.com. Schumacher is one for three. See if the Cardinals want to do a little running here with Brendan Ryan. Skip Schumacher after the All-Star break a season ago. 
hit 369. That was best in the major leagues. Get out of play. Strike one. See Brendan Ryan over at first. He'll be hopping around over there as he takes his lean. Yeah, just a lot of energy, a lot of fidgety. And almost picked off. And Brendan somehow finds himself uh, the target of uh, his manager and coaching staff at times. And I would say, shorten up your lead. It's pretty close. He's got good speed. No balls, one strike. Ludwig with the big shot in the game for the Cardinals, a three run homer to tie it up. Padres have regained the lead. Strike two on Schumacher. It's an RBI single by Giles in the top of the six. The 0 2 pitch. The throw over. Brendan is back in safely, diving head first and just in before the tag. The 0 2. Schumacher, base hit into right. Ryan on his way to second, stays put. And with one out, here comes Ludwig. A chance to do some damage. Ludwig with 22 home runs. Number 22 tonight back in the fourth inning. A three run shot. It's nice to see that one. Tied the game at six all. Padres have come back and taken a one run lead, but got a chance here to do some damage. You see that swing. He just loads up on the backside and then just explodes. Walsley, the pitching coach, out to talk to Mike Adams. He missed all last season with a knee injury. Been in the big leagues with Milwaukee before. U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live is coming up after the game, and Hungle made his way to batting practice. Oh, I was helping Skip, or he was, my alter ego. So who are the uh, candidates tonight? Um, besides uh, J.R. Reynolds, I'd have to say Mr. Vallone, if you convince me. Troy Glossway swinging the bat. How about Ludwig, you know, his first All-Star game? Three-run home run here tonight. Could hinge on what he does in this at bat. First and second with one out. First pitch to Ludwig is taken for a ball outside. Of course, he was at the All-Star game and took in the home run derby. The first round by Josh Hamilton and I'm not a big fan of the home run derby. I think it's kind of worn off the newness of it and, and how much fun it is to watch. But I absolutely loved watching what Josh Hamilton did at Yankee Stadium. That was something else. It'll be fun next year. When yeah, it's right in, in here. person it'll be different. Yeah. Of course the fan fest will start on the Saturday morning. At the futures game on Sunday. Home run hitting contest on on Monday. Tuesday the world of baseball will all be here in attendance. And I taught him that drill too. Just looks weird. The one one pitch <laughs> to Ludwig. Hungo no or the, or the drill. I mean, no offense. <laughs> 
Just a little odd that shot. But that's your buddy Tony West. Who's come up with that shot. Two balls and a strike. Runners at first and second. Ludwig a big swing and a miss. Well, a hanging breaking ball that his eyes lit up but missed it. On deck it's Albert Pujols and lefty getting loose in the pen for San Diego. Thatcher is their lefty. Two and two the count. Now Springer has been throwing for a long time. The next two Ludwig struck him out and it's up to Albert. Hey, we got to send away good well wishes to our good friend Don Thompson. Known Don a long time. He was a, the guard down in the bullpen section when at the old stadium, and he's been in the clubhouse for many, many years. Took over when Doggy Lynch passed away. But uh, Don, over the All Star break, broke his leg, and we wish him a speedy recovery. Sorely missed in that clubhouse, and I know Dan, you can't wait to uh, see Don and pass along your condolences. Well, it's, it's a leg injury. He'll he'll be back. His broken leg. You know. I'm looking forward to seeing him back. Nice. It was a Buck and Bronco. They got him. It's lawnmower. A John Deere. <laughs> Nice man. We want him back. 261 is Pujols average with two outs and runners in scoring position. He could tie it up and put the Cardinals on top. Here's a one out to Albert. Third base is open. If you don't want to pitch to Pujols, you could load him up for Troy Gloss, but he's been swinging a hot bat. They are deep, deep, deep. Well, we noted last night they have a tendency to play extremely deep anyway. Keeps on flirting with that hanging breaking ball. Turning Gloss just studying Adams. Turn him loose on three and oh. He likes it. He'll hammer it. 3 0 pitch. Way outside, and that's ball four. Bases loaded for Troy Gloss. They didn't want anything to do with pools. Ryan stands at third base. Schumacher over at second. So good speed. Pools over at first. It's fine if you get the next guy out, but Troy Gloss swinging that hot bat. As we talked about, arguably the hottest bat in this lineup is at the plate, Troy Gloss. Base is loaded. 7 6 San Diego with two outs here in the sixth. First pitch to him. A strike. Troy's got a seven game hitting streak, and during that time, he is 16 for 26. Did not like that uh, first strike call. Falls behind, nothing in one. Shaking his head up there. The 0 1. Now in the hole, nothing in two. A lot of motion and then that breaking ball. 6-5, 190. There's Mike Adams. The 0-2. Wasted, one and two. Texas A&M versus UCLA. This crowd is ready to erupt. The one-two pitch just missed. Two and two. 
Tough pitch to take right there from Adams. Last ball man. Trying to hit the outer corner. What will he see on two and two with the bases loaded? Probably see a slider here. There it is. Got him to chase, and he strikes out with the bases loaded. Throws the bat, and the Cardinals have stranded seven. They strand the bases loaded. There's your slider. Troy chased it. Seventh inning coming up. Top of the seventh rolls in. It's seven six in favor of the Padres. New pitcher in for the Cardinals, Russ Springer. This will be his 40th appearance. They're all reliable, isn't he? Yes, sir. Cal Eldred was here in attendance, and guys like Springer and everything have said, hey, Got a uniform for you. Come on. <laughs> Cal was probably halfway tempted. Kevin Kuzminov. I'm sure he would have turned down the paycheck, though. Of course. Swing and a miss by Kuzminov to start the seventh, followed by Headley and then Green. And I wouldn't be surprised if Cal's come in for the Christian Family Day tomorrow. Adam Kennedy stays in the ball game to take over at second. But you're lining out to third. No balls and two strikes. And I've got a fundraiser tomorrow over at the ballpark saloon where we're going to have little patriots. This is a wonderful organization that shows support to the immediate family members and military personnel as they face the psychological and emotional stress of deployment. And I've got about 14. Ex Redbird players are going to be coming, signing autographs. Rawlings was great enough to uh, give us a bunch of baseballs, major league quality baseballs, and we're going to sign from 1:30 to 2:30. It's a 2:55 start, and a lot of raffle items, and raise a lot of money for that great organization. Well done. Here's a one-two pitch, spoiled. Tom Williamson has been involved in baseball for almost 52 and a half years. 52 and a half years for Tom Williamson. And he's only 45. We call him T Dub. T Dub. Been around a long time doing a lot of different sports broadcasts. One two pitch and a strikeout to start the seventh. What time again tomorrow over at the uh, saloon? Well, the players are going to be signing, and there'll be guys like uh, Rizzi and Danny Cox, Glenn Brummer, Joe Cunningham, Dal Maxville, and others. They've got 15 of us, and we're going to sign from like 1:30 to 2:30. After the game, will be some stuff, but we'll have a lot of raffle items. You know, I got a Stan Musial. Dick Zitzman was kind enough to give me a Stan Musial bat that buy some raffle tickets, give that away. Lou Brock signed a couple baseballs. Got a Hungo Award. We're going to even give away and. Cardinals gave me some ticket vouchers for future games. So had a lot of prizes and hopefully raised a lot of money for that wonderful organization, Little Patriots. There's the 0 1 pitch. How about memorabilia from a team even like the Yankees? Al? Hey. You know, I guess this guy was not a Sexton fan because he's in the lineup tonight. But he's Sexton, huh? Yeah. The other New York team, the Mets, lose to Cincinnati. All of a sudden, they're right in the hunt for the wild card or the division. 5 2, the Reds. They won 10 in a row and moved into first place before tonight. That's right. In Philadelphia. Beat Marlin, so they move back over, back on top. That they do, the one two pitch. Got him. Old reliable, as you like to call him. Can still be pretty dirty when he wants to be. Well, he sure can. He's probably one of the best strikeout options the Cardinals have in their bullpen. That nasty slider just underneath the hands of a lefty. 
almost a self defense swing. Top of the ninth, the Cubs and Astros tied at 1 1. Ross guarding the line tonight. Two outs. Green is homer tonight with an opposite field shot. Looper only lasted three innings. Seen Thompson, seen Valone. Now Springer. Uh, Cleo Green, even with his one for three, home run and a pair of strikeouts, just 215 average. 1 0 pitch. Popped up. Pujols will give it a look. Along with Molina, it's out of play. What is it? Green had, I think, 27 home runs last year and nearly 100 RBIs. Hit his ninth home run tonight and his 33rd RBI. If you're Bud Black, that's one player you're probably not even worried about coming into the season, but he has not had a typical Khalil Green type year. Last year, 27 home runs, 97 driven in. Yeah, and, and I mean, First time we saw him a couple of years ago, he was just one of the real exciting young players in the game. Wound up hitting a 254 last year. His averages haven't been great, but the home runs, the RBIs, and the defense have been from the shortstop position. Out of Key West, Florida. One and two is the count. Molina sets up on one knee inside. Hits a spot. Popped up. Kennedy. Time to stretch here in St. Louis at Bush Stadium. The Cardinals owning a 7 6 lead. Jennifer Range is tonight's merchandise winner in the Hyundai long drive inning sweepstakes if the Cardinals hit a home run in the seventh. Jennifer Range qualifies for the Hyundai Sonata drawing in September. To register, visit a St. Louis area Hyundai dealer. Rick and Keel with the Cardinals down by a run at 7 6. Bring in a lefty to face and Keel, Joe Thatcher. Left handed batters are only batting 391 against him. And Keel has handled lefties just fine. Well, this guy, <laughs> you can see that sweeping delivery, 391 for left-handed batters, only 347 for righties. Quickly, nothing in two. Thatcher already is 0 for 4 with a 6.75 ERA and five holds and 22 appearances for San Diego this year. Here's the 0-2 pitch on Ant Keel. Fouled back. Cardinals led at one point, three to one. Trailed six three, tied it up six six, and now trails seven six. And Keel spoils that pitch. Thatcher from Kokomo, Indiana. Went to Indiana State. A sycamore, huh? Yeah. Maybe he played with Clint Barmas. Not drafted in his senior year back in 04. Cubs lose. The Astros beat Chicago 2-1. to one. Pick up a game. Lilly went seven innings in that game. No decision for him. Edmonds a solo home run. Carlos Lee had a solo home run. That tied it up and then the Astros would win it. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Sweeping breaking ball one and two. That's that's the pitch that if you can get Rick to swing at he comes up empty. But if you leave that pitch in the middle of the plate. Rick is going to hit it hard. It's an RBI by Hunter Pence in the bottom of the ninth to win it for Houston. Spoiled again by Ann Keel. Just a little beyond his reach or in his wheelhouse. 
We talked about it last night from his call up as a position player last year to what we've seen now. It's almost a full year. And and Teal with 30 plus home runs since that time. His career against San Diego and it's only a span of eight games sitting 529 with four home runs and nine RBIs. Two two pitch fouled back. So nine pitches so far in this at bat to Ricky and Keel. Two and two. Fastball away. A little low. Good at bat here by Ann Keel to start this seventh for St. Louis. Well, Thatcher may get him, but Rick is up there battling, making him work, and the more pitches you see, the more likelihood you're going to get a mistake. Pitch number 11 coming up in the at bat. Fastball away. 3 2. And Keel pops it up. Out of play. Mislocation on the inner part of the plate. Supposed to be away. Eight of the 11 pitches have been strikes, and we got the 3 2 count. Ludwig took the team lead in home runs with 22 earlier tonight. Three run shot back in the fourth. Can and Keel tie him right here and then tie up the game as well. 3 2 pitch and Keel, a high fly ball. Right field. Goodbye. Over the bullpen and we are tied. 7 7, number 22 for Rick and Keel. And exactly what we're talking about a total mistake in location. And Rick really battled, battled. He got a pitch he could drive, and he did nothing but do that. Three winner. RBIs in the night for Rick. And a winner in the Hyundai long drive inning sweepstakes. Uh, I'll tell you one thing that, that's a perfect example of how wow. talented he is and what damage he can do against a left handed pitcher. It's Jennifer Range, our winner tonight. And here it is the lefty staying into the game to face Yadier Molina. Well, I mean, instead of being away, that ball was desked down and in right in Rick's wheelhouse, and he turned on it. Hey, it's Springer. Hey, kid. Nice going. Boy, that ball was crushed over oh, the there was, Yeah, it was. It was no doubt about it. You know, and you know, here's here's the situation. You know, I mean, I don't mean to pick on Thatcher, but you know. It doesn't do a lot of good to have a lefty in your bullpen if your numbers are so horrendous against lefties. Well, both lefties are batting 400 against him, and and righties are batting 350. So if you're gonna have a lefty, let's let's have him you get at least lefties. One. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's yeah, it's nice to have a couple lefties, but if they can't get people out, base hit into center. Go ahead run is on. That's his tourist at first. So one out runner at first. The 7 7 game here in the seventh. Be the coolest kid at the lunch table. It's a 10 lunch box featuring center fielder Ricky and Keel July 20th. Cardinals and Padres. That'll be this Sunday. Here is Kennedy over one. He is lined out to third. And a bat was very identical to the one that we saw the other night against Zach Duke. And in Pittsburgh, where he fouled off a bunch of pitches, and finally a, a lefty makes a mistake and gets it in his wheelhouse, and he makes you pay. And Keel's seventh home run against lefties this year, 15 against righties. His tourists, he can swipe a bag. 
Cardinals would they want to be aggressive here. Well, Meredith is warming up behind Joe Thatcher. There he goes pitch in the dirt throw to second safe. Well they made that close. This tourist has a rip in the back of his pants his uniform as he came up sliding a little pop up slide. And Hundley made that pretty close and Thatcher very slow to the plate and and you could see Hundley has very quick feet. And a snap throw right there but second stolen base for his tourists he now has. 10 on the season leads the team. And a rip in his pants. One ball, one strike on Kennedy. He has one home run this year. A base hit would give the Cardinals a lead. You would presume. Any more shallow with Kennedy up, but. Bud Black knows Adam Kennedy from their days with the Angels. Pitch up and in, two balls and one strike. Bud was the pitching coach for the Angels before taking over the managerial reins of the Padres. Chris Duncan was on the on deck circle, and now it's Aaron Miles. Here's a 2 1. Slowly hit left side is Turris. He saw that Kuzminov had to leave that third base area so he could advance. And now wild pitch, pass ball, you'll take anything. Yeah, good base running right there is knew that Kuzminov would have to alter his approach to the ball and couldn't reach him. So he could go on to third. Looks like we'll have a pitching change now with a switch hitter Miles being announced. Looks like a double switch. So the go ahead run standing at third base with two outs. Well, Green is coming off the field. Their shortstop. They Meredith have been warming up. And that looks like Bell maybe kind of pointed to himself. So trying to figure out who's going to come into this game. Measured and Keel's home run at 437 feet. So we know Thatcher's gone. And it looks like Bell is coming out. He's a big strikeout guy, but and Luis Rodriguez has gone in to play shortstop. We'll step aside at 7 7. Seven seven, bottom of the seventh. Well, the runner at third and Aaron Miles due up. Rick and Keel has tied it up to a long at bat. This is our Hardy's prime cut of the game. 437 foot home run. Trying to get that ball away from him. Missed on the inner part of the plate and he just turned on it. Tied the score and now can Miles give the Cardinals a lead. Well left handed 325 and yet but black gets him to that side of the plate. Well the one thing is that he fell and this guy had over 100 strikeouts last year pitching relief in 90 plus innings. He's very good but lefties are only batting 174 against him this year right he's 244. First pitch to Miles is in the dirt nice block by Hundley. He can get it up there in a hurry. No history between these two. They've never faced each other. He fell really kind of started with the, the Mets organization. And 07 was his first year with San Diego. He's 6 and 4 ERA at 2.02 in 81 games. Had two saves. And as I said, 102 strikeouts and 93 innings. I mentioned that the Phillies had won. And it's Jamie Moyer who has just been remarkable against the Marlins in his career. They win four to two the Mets lose five to two the big one the Cubs lose. 
3 and 0. Oh. Schumacher on deck and we know what he does against right handed pitching. A lot of people last year kind of as Trevor Hoffman had an up and down season and a lot of people thought the tough decision was to make Bell their closer. And that's outside for ball four. But Black is saying game on the line I'm going with Bell. Game on the line in the seventh inning a lot of times you don't get to your closer. That's right. You, you see the difference of what Schumacher's done against right handed pitching but here's repeating that Bell has had more dominant numbers against left handed hitters than the righties. Schumacher strike one. Righties 244, the lefties just 174. So both managers have the situation they want. They want Schumacher facing a, a right handed pitcher. And Bud Black's not afraid to have Bell face any left handed hitter. Bell is a hard thrower. One ball, one strike. That one at 95 on our gun. He's from Southern California and he. Walked on to his college baseball team at Rancho Santiago Community College and then was a freshman All American. The 1 1 pitch up and away, two balls and a strike. Bell again falls behind. Two balls and a strike on Schumacher. Tied game here in the bottom of the seventh. Slider there. Bill is 30 years of age. Listed as 6'3, 240. Mentioned that Schumacher 338 against righties, 317 in his career against right handed pitching. It's fastball that supposed to be inside and got a little more of the plate but at 95 miles an hour a little tardy on the swing almost hit that out of the glove that counts hey we take, take it, it. <laughs> you know catches interference alive. two and two San Diego bullpen has allowed over 47 percent of its inherited runners to score the most in the big leagues fastball away. 96 on our gun, 97 on the stadium gun. You see, he gets it up there. He shook off the curveball. Adrian Gonzalez, first baseman, playing behind Miles. Count full. And spoiled by Schumacher. A little breaking ball, backdoored it, and everything. Skipped out a little piece of it. We saw the fastball. He was very tardy on that pitch. Why would he go with the breaking ball there? Trying to trick you. Trying to trick you. You know, guys, today it's it's amazing that just don't have the confidence in their fastballs or the ability to spot it. Even if a hitter's looking for it, he shouldn't catch up to that. Didn't want the fastball. He wants the curveball. Three-two pitch. Schumacher a swing and a miss. But this game has been tied up. Thanks to Rick and Peel. It's seven seven as we head to the eighth. Grandel's baseball tonight on FSN. Let's recap what has taken place tonight. Braden Looper only three innings out of the Cardinal starter. Maddox lasts only four and a lot of offense on both sides. Seven seven our Jack in the Box recap. Big home run by Ryan Ludwig. Also by Ricky and Keel to tie it up. Ludwig's tied it up at 6 6, and Keel's made it 7 7. You want offense? You've got it tonight. 24 combined hits. New pitcher for St. Louis. It's Kyle McClellan. Um, pitched a couple uh, outs last night. People might have wondered why they took him out and brought in Ballone to get the final out of the inning, but 
One of the reasons why Tony did so is so he'd be available here again tonight. And he's a staff with his 47 appearances. The 1 1 pitch hit down the left field line and pulled foul off the bat of Nick Hundley. Hundley tonight struck out looking. His last time up, he has also doubled and struck out looking back in the second. Here's a one two. A knee buckling curveball and a strikeout for Cal McClellan. Cal's had a very, very good uh, rookie season and a big curveball right there that it gets a lot of guys talking to themselves. He's got four great pitches. He's got a bright future. He's really a smart young man that's uh, really soaked in this atmosphere and become a real plus. Luis Rodriguez first pitch taken for a ball. And Tony the Russo has really used him in vital key roles and spots this year. Brown ball right side handled easily. Miles is there. Two away. Brother is his pitching coach. Father has a sports facility. Had a lot of reconstruction on that elbow, but he has a power plus arm. Stiff front leg. Ooh. Suntrip.com cam is brought to you by the Suntrip Automotive Group. Breaking ball and a strike. Some say that he has the best curveball on the Cardinals team. Doesn't waste any time. He gets it and goes. There's another one. Strike two. Jody Garrett, the leadoff man, falls behind nothing in two. Jody's had a nice night, three for four, including a two run home run. Cardinals will have Ludwig Pujols and Gloss coming up. There's the fastball. I'm sorry, excuse me, the slider. Yeah, the cutter that burned up here. There it is again. Two and two. Two and two. Ooh, just missed. And the back door of the curveball out there. Three two pitch. And after jumping out ahead, nothing at two, he walked him. Edgar Gonzalez. So two outs and a runner at first. And that pitch is a little low and outside. Gonzalez tonight singled back in the first. Hit by a pitch in the third. Struck out in the fourth and singled in the sixth. Sometimes they get so happy with the breaking pitches. The curveball and sliders. For McClellan that. You, know, you just don't throw enough fastballs to. To have good location with it. You walk to. Garrett on the fastball. Runner goes on one and oh chance for Molina. Yes sir. He got him. Ludwig Pujols gloss coming up. Baseball tonight on FSM Midwest is brought to you by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. By Chevrolet. See for yourself. Shop and compare at STLChevy.com. And by Sonic. It's not just good, it's Sonic good. No doubt about it, as Molina guns down another, you give him a chance to throw, he's going to more times than not. Do this to any base runner. 
SunTrip.com cam brought to you by the SunTrip Automotive Group. Back over about 34% of catchy would be Steelers. Got off to a very slow start because of the pitchers really did not, you know, I mean, I think they knew the reputation and thought that nobody would ever run, but they weren't doing their job holding runners in check. And Molina several times didn't even have a chance to throw. Bell still in the game to face Ludwig, then Pujols and Troy Gloss, 7-7. Cardinals have stranded nine tonight. The 0 1 pitch. Cardinal fans could get a real treat tonight and seeing a future Hall of Famer start this game for San Diego and possibly see a future Hall of Famer pitch at the end of the game for San Diego. And a future Hall of Famer might determine the outcome with one swing. Outfield is deep for Ludwig. He has a three run homer tonight. RBI total for Ludwig now up to 68. Very, very deep in the outfield. Big gap in left center. Yeah, I don't think he can get around on a on a pitch. So here comes the 0-2. Instead, Bell will step off. 44,000 plus here tonight at Bush Stadium. Cardinals will have Wellemeyer going tomorrow. Randy Wolf will get the start for the Padres. And again, that game is on Big Fox at 2.30. Nothing into the count on Ludwig. The next to him got him to chase and a strikeout. Pools will step in. Be a fun battle here, huh? Power and power. First pitch to Albert. A strike. Last time up, he had second, or rather first and second, and uh, on four straight, they walked him. Bases loaded for Gloss, and then he would strike out. Here's the 0 1. Fastball away. Swung on to miss, strike two. He's just gone right after him, challenged him with a pair of fastballs, and It looked like he was looking for the breaking ball and was couldn't catch up to the 95 mile an hour. Up the middle on an 0-2 pitch and a base hit. The guy is just remarkable. His third hit and there you go. Bell goes right after him with the fastball, gets ahead. Now this is an exceptional pitch down the way. Gets this one up a little bit, but Albert had that ability. To tomahawk a high delivery and hit it right back up the middle for his third hit of the day. And he's been on base four times with a walk. And the one time they made made it out, it was a line drive to center that Garrett made a nice diving catch. So one out, a runner at first. That's Pools. First pitch to Gloss. He's taken for a ball. Struck out with the bases loaded, doubled and scored. He is singled and also flied out to left. We're in the eighth, 7 7. Pitch right there. They're trying to get him to chase that slider. It looks more like a slider, doesn't it? And it looked like they put down a curveball sign, but more of a slurve or in between. There's a curveball, but. This pitch that we look like, you know, it's, it doesn't break like a curveball. 
Nobody getting loose in the Padres bullpen. Three and zero on Gloss. So with the way that he's swinging the bat, turn him loose. Yep. And looks like Izzy warming up in the Cardinal pin. Fastball away. And that's ball four. Four straight. And Pujols is in scoring position. Rick and Kill will be the hitter. Got to go up there looking fastball. And if you get the lesser pitch, the the curveball just spoil it. If you're looking curveball, you won't catch up to his fastball. And Keel tied it with a home run last inning. 400 feet plus. First pitch to him is a strike. Here's the 0 1. And a breaking ball. And now you just have to try and be quick enough to just foul off a pitch and wait for a mistake. Great at bat his last time up when he tied the game up with his 22nd home run and gets a left handed pitcher. Was it? 12 pitches in the bat. You are correct. Molina on deck. Here comes an 0-2 pitch. Broken bat slowly hit. Won't be able to get two, and they won't be able to get one. Bases are loaded. Gonzalez, the first baseman, went to his right. Edgar Gonzalez and he never retreated back and Bell was late in covering. It was one of those situations where Adrian Gonzalez ventured further to his right than he should never retreated back. That pitcher watch the pitcher. He does not react immediately and nobody at first base. Wow. So makes a good well I guess he did but he just didn't get there. An infield single. Well, Molina is the hardest major league batter to strike out. He strikes out once every 20 at bats and only 14 strikeouts on the year. That's the positive. The negative, the running speed, the fact that he does put it in play, and the potential for the double play. Pujols, a single on an 0 2 pitch, he's at third. Gloss walked on four pitches, he's at second. Infield hit by Ricky and Keel. Bases loaded here in the bottom of the eighth for Yadier Molina. First pitch to Yadi. A pitch out to see if they might potentially think about the squeeze with the bases loaded. And well, I mean, with with Albert running and everything like this, you know, I mean, I just it was. It would it would surprise me. And Yachty's one of those guys that you know many times he's he's a guy that as you say you don't if he hits it on the ground they got their double play. But here's a guy that I really feel that rises to occasions like this and is going to have a quality of bat. What's interesting is that there's one out and Molina has 31 RBIs. 20 of the 31 have come with two outs. Well, that's what I mean. He, he's a clutch performer. He's not afraid of hitting with two outs. There's there's one in this situation, but the game is on the line, and you trust Yachty. This crowd is ready to explode. One ball, one strike on Molina. Check swing did not go. You see, they're just a bit outside. And that's what you're talking about. His ability to be the toughest batter to strike out. He won't expand his zone on pitches like that. That got that pitch would have. Been strike two to many a hitter. Shade him a little bit to the opposite field. Gap out in left center. 
still nobody up and throwing for the Padres in their pin. It's all up to Bell. The 2 1 pitch. Molina hits it out of play and foul. Cardinals with Izzy getting loose. 2 and 2 on Molina. The Cubs have already lost. Milwaukee has a early 1 0 lead in San Francisco, batting in the fourth. CC Sabathia at the mount, at the plate. They Meredith, another right-hander warming up now for the Just Padres. started too, but he'd been up early. Two-two. Molina reaches for it. Base hit in the right, and the Cardinals have the lead. Loss being waved in. Play at the plate. Not in time, and Molina delivers, and the Cardinals have a two-run lead. Trust Yachty. Not the prettiest of base hits, but very, very effective. Picking up two RBIs. The breaking ball down and away just reaches out there, makes contact, and shoots it through the right hole, the right side. And the Cardinals pick up two runs. Pool Holtz and Gloss full score on the RBI single. Take second on the throw. Well, partner, what gets interesting is what's been happening in the bullpen for the Cardinals. Isringhausen up and loose. As he gets the night or gets the, the chance here. And base hit would be nice here and a four run cushion. Infield drawn in is Turris. Looks at a strike. And I think, you know, Franklin had a successful save conversion after a tough start with back to back doubles made it a one run game but you know these are the situations where he is he's going to have his opportunities to get to 300 and it starts tonight maybe this tourist taps it foul off his foot it looked like and it's one and two big big base hit by Molina if the Cardinals can hold on and win this ball game leading by two runs they pulled it within three games of the Chicago Cubs and win number 55 of the season. Bell, by the way, in his past 24 games since May 20th, was 6 and 0 with a 1.42 ERA coming in tonight. Izzy has not had a save since May 5th. Two and two. Two two pitch is Turris ground ball to short play at the plate and out and Keel hands up in the air pleading his case and here comes Tony La Rossi. He didn't slide was the tag there that beat him well, apparently in and Keel's mind as he was not tagged but the throw beat him and a good pressure play by Rodriguez. A lot of times, even if you just don't slide, benefit of the doubt will go to the fielder and they just don't call him out. Off balance throw and he comes right here. And let's see right here. And from the umpire situation, it appeared that he got him on the leg. Throw was there. Did he really tag him? We can't tell. So here's Duncan with two outs. Runners at first and third. Off the bench for Chris. First pitch is strike. 93 miles an hour the fastball 97 Cardinals it's been back and forth all night ground ball base hit Duncan delivers a run will score it's a three run Cardinals lead that is a Big, big base hit right there by Duncan. Patting the lead, that three run cushion. And that'll be it for Heath Bell. But Black will bring in Clay Meredith. Well, they stuck with him a long time. You gotta wonder about his availability to bounce back tomorrow. Nearly 40 pitches here in this game. So Duncan on an 0 1 pitch. 
picks up the RBI a three run Cardinals lead 16 hits tonight for St. Louis and it's 10 to 7 as we step aside here on FSN. Sixteen hits for St. Louis. They've stranded nine, but they have a three-run lead. Cardinals with three runs here in the bottom of the eighth, and it's ten to seven in favor of the Birds. Clay Meredith in for San Diego. This will be his 48th appearance on the year. I mentioned this guy a year ago was very tough, and 80 appearances, five and six, 350 ERA, and really was a very very difficult to hit against this season right handed batters a bang 230 on left handed batters 390 he's held the opponent scoreless in 33 of 47 appearances real good guy in the community San Diego supports the burn Institute very active with uh, military visiting the military hospitals in San Diego miles left field base hit. A run will score. Four run lead for the Cardinals as Torres crosses the plate. 11 7 St. Louis. Boy, is this team fun to watch. Miles. Second plate appearance and does a job in this situation. Just lofts that ball just out away from him. Left knees. Said we're batting 390 against them. They get a good look at this submariner. Very tough on the right handers, but he has had a disappointing season and now, wow, should be a pass ball. Second and third, a base hit. And the Cardinals will be in complete control of this game. They're up by four now. It's 11 7. Scored a wild pitch, but it sure looked like it was not in the dirt. Well you've faced Jake Peavy in game one Maddox tonight have a chance to go up 2 0 in this series and you wonder if San Diego all of a sudden collapses after dropping the first two here in St. Louis. Uh, it's, it's a team that's starting the longest road trip four cities 11 game road trip start this. This games after the All Star break They've got 13 young ki kids on this team. Bud Black has seen you know, 13 guys join his ball club from like Triple A and just waiting for his real team to show up. Three and one. Hit Randy Wolf tomorrow. And some people think he may be on the trade block. Well, we're about 100 games into the season. This might be his real team. Maybe Bruce Bochy wasn't <laughs> knew something, huh? Yeah, you bet. Three and two with two outs. A little disappointing is you hate to ever tell guys to stop swinging the bat, but I wanted to see a save opportunity for Izzy. That will not happen tonight. Base is loaded for Ludwig. He started the inning by striking out. So his second plate appearance. Pujols on deck. And back in 2006, when it looked like the Cardinals might have one of the all time great collapses the final month or so of that regular season. It was Albert Pujols with a home run against Clay Meredith that landed in Big Mac land you might remember and it was one of the biggest home runs if not the biggest of the season in the regular year. Two outs and Ludwig is swinging a miss. You would hate to make two outs in one inning. He wouldn't dare do that, would he? You know, the Hungo could be on on the line too. And strike two. He's already got the hat trick and strikeouts, but a three-run home run and also a single. How about Miles? 3.49 average, the seventh inning or later, a strikeout of. Ludwig two in the inning of Ryan Ludwig but the Cardinals pick up four runs they lead it 11 to 7. 
The big base hit, Yadier Molina. Broke the tie, the Cardinals would add two more, 11-7 as we head to the ninth. Back at Bush Stadium, we head to the ninth with the Cardinals leading this one 11 to 7. Don't forget, coming up after the game on the post game edition of U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live, we'll have Tony LaRusso's post game news conference. We'll go all access inside the Cardinal Clubhouse for player reaction. Plus, it's Friday. That means it's a hungo night. Brent Stover, Rick Horton will have that and more coming up. Okay, Jim, looking forward to it. 11 7, St. Louis over San Diego. Jason Isringhausen. Into the ball game here in the ninth. It's Edgar Gonzalez to lead it off for the Padres. First pitch was a strike. Here comes the second. The breaking ball and that's strike two. I guess one of the big questions on a personal level for Isringhausen will he get to save number 300 by the end of this regular season? I think he will. I think he'll have the opportunity to do it. You know, he was going to be in line for a save here tonight or a save opportunity, but. Uh, Offense a little too potent. Scoring four runs in the bottom of the eighth. 0 oh, 2 pitch. Hit out of play. And there'll be times when, you know, Franklin is used as the primary closer, but is he will have uh, opportunities when, you know, he maybe not be available. And I think Tony will kind of pick, mix and match and see who the best option is on, uh, you know, on an individual game basis. Here's the 0 2. This is an important game. Where the Cardinals could pick up a full game on the, the Chicago Cubs and be three back. A 1 2 pitch. Broken bat. Hit to second. And the all important first out. Our Budweiser player of the game, Budweiser, the great American lager. Yadier Molina now with the biggest hit of the night. Big hit right there, just reaching out, stroking the ball out there. Is only hit of the game, but it plates two and gives the Cardinals a two run lead. They pad that with a couple more. He's done a good job working with the pitching staff. Remember that the runner he threw out at second base was key. But this is a good team effort right here. One out and uh, nobody on for Brian Giles. Giles had a nice night, three for four, but no success against Jason Isringhausen. Now it's also a night in which the Cardinals only get three innings out of their starter. So the bullpen has done a decent job tonight. But the offense keeps plugging along with 17 hits. That, you know, you you fortify that uh, bullpen with Randy Flores and and Jimenez, so you still have some fresh arms down there. You know, Franklin available tomorrow. Probably not Kyle McClellan as he's pitched back-to-back -back days. Springer is very efficient again. The lone is the kind of guy that can come back, so you got your two lefties and. And just close out this victory and you worry about tomorrow tomorrow. Don't see that often from Giles chasing a pitch like that up in the zone. The one two breaking ball. Ooh, just missed. Just missed outside. He's got a very good batting eye and he'll make you throw a strike but you're right he doesn't chase often. There's the curve ball. The two two. Got a piece of it. Giles, one of 11 active players with a thousand runs, over 1,500 hits, 250 homers, a thousand RBIs, and a thousand walks. Cutter back door. Two-two pitch. No free passes when you're up by four. Just go with the express. Easiest pitch you should to control. 
And he walked him a one on walk. Put down one and he threw a cutter. Adrian Gonzalez with the uh, chance to keep this thing going for San Diego. Double play could end it. The Cardinals will like to play behind Giles with Gonzalez up hitting from the left side of the plate. So Pujols plays back. Giles not running. First pitch is a ball. With Izzy on the mound, Proud, of course, a little bit restless when he falls behind. Uh, you've got four runs to work with, and the cardinal sin is walking about. That got him in trouble in Pittsburgh. It wasn't the three run home run, it was the walk. One ball, one strike. Giles running on the pitch, but fouled off by Gonzalez. Ball didn't want it. Fastball in. One and two. Fastball out of way. So I'm saying that you know the today's pitchers probably the pitch they have the least success locating is the fastball, which should be the easiest pitch to locate. Curveball. Jow's running. Ground ball. Pool holes there. He'll take it himself. Two away. The Padres down to their final outs. This game has been kind of a microcosm of the Cardinal season in many ways. It has, and but but I will say the exception is because the Cardinals usually get such good starting pitching the exception is to have a outing like Looper had where the starter only goes three innings. Well, I thought one of the biggest plays in this game was after three consecutive hits in the sixth. The three six one double play where Valone got to the bag and really made an athletic play in the double play. Oh you, you thought he should won the hunger on that. Absolutely. Play. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Well, everybody's holding their breath. I know they are. The edge of their seats. Strike one on Kevin Kuzminov. One pitch from Izzy. Strike two. Good cutter there. Everybody on their feet here at Bush Stadium. This ball club is so resilient, and you just they find ways as a collective group to entertain you, don't they? Yes, they do. A lot of fun to watch. 0 2 pitch. And they have the right man in, in charge in Tony La Russa, like his meeting yesterday before the game, you know, talking about, okay, boys, we'll pat you on the back, what you did before the All Star break, but that doesn't mean anything unless you don't dig down deep, push hard, and bring it on home. The one two. Got a ball game. Cardinals win at 11 7. And that is win number 55. Redbirds find themselves only three games back of Chicago with the win tonight. 17 hits, an 11 7 win here in game two.
Big night for Ludwig with his three run homer and he'll tied it up Molina the biggest hit in the game we'll talk about it coming up on the post game show. Well the game is over here in downtown St. Louis fans going home happy 11 7 the final two straight wins for the Redbirds over the San Diego Padres here and this one not good starting pitching from Braden Looper but the bullpen gets it done and lots and lots of offense coming up on U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live. Future Hall of Famer against a former reliever on the mound. Could the Bulldog hang with Mr. Looper? And inside the Cardinals clubhouse for player reaction and Tony LaRusse as well. And Friday night, which means only one thing, the Hunger Award. Happy birthday, Hunter S. Thompson. But there's no fear and loathing here. U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live next.